backhand palm, the backhand palming of a playing card, which is essentially uh, the basis of all card manipulation, uh, was introduced into this country about the year 1887 by a, by a Mexican gambler. Um, the story goes uh, like this. An obscure Mexican gambler walked into uh, the magic shop of a German-American named Otto Maurer, who had a magic shop on the Bowery. And he walked in and said, look, I'm going to show you fellas an absolutely new slide with cards. And he took a playing card at his fingertips and apparently tossed it in the air and reproduced it. Um, this was the beginning. He showed it to the local fellas there. It got around. And sometime later, uh, a very great early card man by the name of Dr. Elliot developed the, the con what was known as the continuous back and front palm, which was uh, uh, the ability to back palm the card and then show both sides of the hand without the card being seen and reproducing the card. Uh, after that, Sevier Leroy, the great Belgian illusionist, uh, developed the first combination, uh, the, uh, the first combined use of um, the back palm, which uh, employed five cards. He vanished five cards one at a time, showed his hand back and front and reproduced the five cards. And that was pretty much the, the extent of the development at that time. A, a bit after that, Howard Thurston learned something from each of these people, uh, and he developed the first uh, complete card act. Uh, he debuted this He debuted this in America, and the, but when he took it to uh, England in 1900, uh, I'm not sure if, if, if it was the Princess Theatre or the Palace Theatre, but he made a huge success and he stayed six consecutive months. And from then on, the, uh, the art of card manipulation developed slowly uh, with, uh, with each successive uh, performer. Up until the, the fact, uh, up until the point where you get Cardini uh, in the 20s uh, doing card productions, split fan productions, with and without gloves on. Cardini, uh, Cardini is generally credited with the split fan production. That is the ability to produce fans of cards rather than single cards out of the air. Yeah. Uh, he's also credited with the first person to produce fans of cards wearing white gloves. However, that's debatable because there was a there was a, uh, an English hobbyist who was a member, I believe, of the Magic Circle who a few years earlier had done it, just demonstrating to magicians. But Cardini is the one who really popularized it. The way he, he got onto it was, um, uh, was because he had been a soldier in the First World War and while he was uh, sitting in the trenches between battles uh, um, during the long winter nights, he'd, he'd keep his gloves on to keep his hands warm. So he had to practice his cards with the gloves on. That's how he developed it. Yeah. But, uh, but essentially, card manipulation um, was never a one-man thing. It was, uh, it was a collaborative effort, and, it, and it, it evolved the way television has evolved, or, or many other, th you know, it's, uh, it's one of these things that's not a one-man creation. It is not a one-man creation. It was an evolutionary thing. Stand-up card manipulation is something, in a way, quite different from close-up card magic uh, in the sense that it's a, a far more visual type of magic uh, and it gains through being performed in silence as, as opposed to being performed with patter because it's a lot more visual, it's more kinetic, uh, it's very lyrical. It's essentially a now-you-see-it-now-you-don't type of thing, but it, but it, has, but it has great... Uh, has great visual appeal, and um, and it's probably uh, within the idiom of magic. It's probably the only only magical discipline which, from a technical standpoint, is on an equal footing with uh, with the most difficult uh, the most difficult uh, branches of of uh, expression and other forms. You know, I mean, it's the only thing that equals. Uh, say, the techniques of a piano player or a great singer. Because as you know, a lot of great magic is not really that difficult technically, but card manipulation, uh, card manipulation is. Mm -hmm. 
when I was a 12-year-old boy, I won't tell you which year, but when I was a 12-year-old boy, there used to be an amusement, an amusement park called Freedomland. It was something along the lines of Disneyland, and this was, believe it or not, somewhere uh, in the Bronx. And in this amusement park, they had a magic shop. And one day I went to this magic shop and I wanted to purchase the SS Adams linking ring trick. And the SS Adam uh, version was a, was a small version. Uh, well, this was, well, this was the smallest version they made. It sold for a dollar in those days. And I went, went there and asked the man behind the counter for the trick. And he told me that it was a dollar. I reached in my pocket and all I had was 75 cents. And even though I was 12 years old, he w the man was not kind enough to let me slide on, on the quarter. So, you know, like every 12-year-old boy who visits a magic shop, I didn't want to leave empty-handed. So I said, look, what can I get for 75 cents? He said, well, we have a, a book of card tricks, and you can have it uh, for 75 cents, and, you don't ha and I'll let you slide on the attacks. So I said, well, but I already know all about card tricks. <laughs> <laughs> thinking, well, you know, pick a card, put it back kind of thing, you know. Uh, although I, I only knew one of those. So uh, anyway, I took the book and it said Howard Thurston's Card Tricks, which was a book that had uh, originally been published in 1900. And this was like the umpteenth printing. In any case, I gave him the money, I'm walking home and I'm glancing through the pages, and all of a sudden I see an old steel engraving uh, of a person's hand with a playing, playing card hidden behind it. This was my introduction to the back palm. And all of a sudden, <coughs> I, I stopped in my tracks and I was thunderstruck. And I went home that night. Uh, and, and all I did for the rest of the evening was back palm a card. Uh, in fact, when my parents went to sleep later on that evening, I snuck into the bathroom uh, and, I stood in, and I stood in front of the mirror and that's all I did all night long. And I was just obsessed with this. And from that moment on, I knew this is what my life is about. This is what I have to do. That's what my life is about. I have to do this every day for the rest of my life. Uh, nothing else meant anything else to me. Not illusions, not this, not that. If I could do that, then this is the sign of a truly great magician. You see, because at 12 years old, I instinctively, I instinctively knew that I had, I had come across a professional magic secret. A professional magic secret. Not a, not a kid's magic secret, I say. Oh, yeah, and this brings me to a, an important point. Obsession. Without obsession, there's no mastery. Obsession together with love. These are the two things that have to be present inside someone in order for them to master anything, no matter how difficult. It's obsession and love. Once you have this obsession, nine times out of ten, you will master it. One of, the primary, one of the primary motivators uh, that one could have is a, uh, is a figure, a figurehead, a person who inspires you. Because I think the basis, uh, the basis of all um, creativity is, is really admiration. You, you look at someone and you say, you know what, I want to be one of those guys. All right? So the, so the whole... So the whole um, the whole uh, educational process starts from that point. Um, I want to be one of those guys, right? If you're, if you're uh, into magic, you say, I want to be a Cardini, I want to be a Channing Pollock, I want to be whatever. If you're a painter, I want to be a Picasso, right? Or I want to be, uh, if I'm a singer, I want to be uh, anything, a Barbara Streisand. So it always begins with, I want to be one of those guys. Now, it doesn't matter whether one of those guys was you first saw in a book, or you first saw on the stage, or you first saw in a movie, but I want to be one of those guys. So you need a, a mentor as a kind of, as a kind of a, a catalyst, a, a motivator. It's, um, I want to be one of those guys. So that's the beginning of it. And uh, a, mentor is, a mentor is one of those guys that you manage to get a hold of in person and be instructed by, be inspired, you know, the master. In Japan, they talk about the, the masters. You, one of the best ways to learn is to find, make contact with one of those guys.
I think it's uh, you can you can start with you start with books and you start with with today DVDs or whatever, but eventually uh, you have to get because you want to be one of those guys, but eventually you have to you've got to make contact with one of those guys because there are a lot of intangibles that you're not going to get from either books or DVDs. I mean, there are many things you do get because in a certain way there has to be a certain amount of autonomous uh, autonomous exploration, autonomous um, an autonomous learning experience, but eventually you have to get a hold of one of those guys. Uh, not, only, uh, not, only, not only because uh, personal instruction is, is, is helpful, but because, uh, uh, because of the element of osmosis. You, know, you, start, to, you start to assimilate uh, uh, the history you know, and the, the trials and tribulations of this living, breathing person, uh, especially if they're older than you are, you know, uh, who, uh, who kind of transfers who transfers the um, uh, the life experience of what it what it meant to be, what it meant to be an artist, you see, what it meant to struggle and to fail and to pick yourself up and then succeed. My mentors, um, well, my f uh, well, I had two kinds of mentors. I had people who I'd seen but never met, and I had people who I eventually got a hold of, uh, and as I said, uh, became a part of my life and, uh, and instructed and inspired me. Um, my first major inspiration in magic uh, was Johnny Hart. Uh, some time ago, uh, when I was about a 14-year-old kid, uh, I had seen him on the Ed Sullivan Show, and uh, that was the first time I was truly enthralled by a magic act. He was a manipulator. He did cards and he did parakeets, um, doves. And then I had seen uh, uh, Channing Pollock, who was another revelation. And then uh, Marvin Roy. My, uh, my uh, taste tended to run uh, for visual magic, stand-up manipulation. Um, I've always loved all kinds of magic, but I, as I get, I, I, but I have a predilection for visual magic. So I tended to, to gravitate to, uh, to those type of mentors. And my first mentor, uh, my first official mentor, was a man named Paul Draylin. He was a, 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 a sleight of hand artist in the Cardini tradition. He wore tails and, uh, and a top hat, and he was a, a very uh, nice looking man. And he worked, um, he worked in nightclubs and cabarets and the theaters of, of the 1940s. And uh, he specialized in cigarettes, cards, billy balls, and and some very, very elegant visual effects. He did the soul, an early version of the Soul Trick, uh, things like that. Uh, I spent uh, many an hour with him in his hotel room uh, uh, during the time when he was kind of a semi-retired gentleman. And so I would come down all the way from the Bronx where I lived as a kid with my parakeets in the cage and uh, my pack of cards in my pocket and we'd spend just hours and hours, uh, not only talking about magic, but talking about people that he knew uh, uh, in his early days, and people he had seen, and, and who had, had inspired him. One of the greatest teachers is myth. Joseph Campbell talks about the importance of myth in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, um, uh, human inspiration, you know, whether it's religious or otherwise, or you know, religious or secular. One of the greatest uh, forms of inspiration in magic even if you want to be a practicing magician, is mythology. One needs a myth. Uh, and sometimes these myths uh, come uh, through the book, sometimes they come through stories passed down from other people, or they come from whatever. But uh, mythology, because, because mythology allows one to ruminate. You see, mythology allows one to ruminate uh, uh, about the things one can be, what the things one can do. You need this mythology, you see. Which is, why, which is why I'm still a great believer in books. Because in a certain sense, a book, a book in a certain sense has a, there's a sort of, uh, a kind of neutrality to a book. You look at the book and the trick, either the trick or the story about somebody who's not really in front of you, uh, uh, but is reflected in the illustrations or the old photos, you can project, you can project anything you want onto this book. You can imagine yourself doing this trick, imagine the person. Now if a person, uh, as much as I think DVDs are valuable or, or as an instructional tool, uh, in a certain sense, if you don't like the person on the DVD, you may not see the glory of the magic being presented. 
or you may not see the glory of, of, uh, of what a performance could be like if another person done it, or maybe if the DVD was shot on another day, <laughs> on another day, uh, and the guy was feeling a little differently. I mean, you know, uh, um, I just mean that, that, so the mythology behind things is a great motivator. So, uh, so the way that these myths are conveyed are important, you know. A magic book is essentially a kind of dream book, right? Uh, the only difference between, say, um, an art book, say a book of surrealist art, and a magic book, is that the magic book is, uh, in addition to showing you these fantasies, a magic book is, is full of, um, it's pregnant with, um, with potential, the potential for you to participate in the fantasies you're seeing, you see. And when it comes to a painting, you're, you tend to be essentially a spectator. You're a spectator. You might, you might, you might uh, uh, project yourself onto it in some way, but you, you know on some level your, your participation is limited. But when you see a magic book, you've got all this fantastic, uh, all this fantastic information going on, uh, which you know on some level that if you wish to, you could participate in. You could actually take possession of it in a more literal way than you could... Because you really can't walk into a painting, you know. You really can't step into it, but you, um, you can, if you wish, and you, in a, in a sense, you can step into a magic book in the sense that you could recreate what's going on in your own, uh, in your own time. Now, I, I, I have a term. People talk today about virtual reality. I, 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 I have a new term, of, um, and I call it virtual surreality. The magician is a kind of virtual surreal, uh, surrealist. He's not a virtual realist. He's not a filmmaker. He doesn't make digital uh, games. Uh, his, his fantasy world is done in real space and real time to its virtual surreality, not virtual reality. See. Another value of having a mentor is that the, the mentor can take you a bit forward um, in terms of, um, in terms of uh, increasing the complexity of your knowledge. Books tend to be books tend to be finite, uh, and even today DVDs, uh, even though they may contain more information, there's a certain, there's something finite about them. When you're with a real living, breathing person who's uh, had a lifetime of experience in the real world, there are nuances that he's going to be able to convey to you that you won't get through these other mediums, uh, because um, uh, he's going to talk to you about things that books aren't necessarily going to tell you, or DVDs, or films, or anything else. There are, there are, there are uh, gradations of shade, and, uh, of shade, and, uh, you know, of light and shade. Uh, what, what, certain things, uh, what certain things don't tell you is like what happens when things go wrong, or, or uh, uh, all the variables. There are so many var variables that occur in a performance, which, which by and large are, are tend out to be conveyed to you through uh, other mediums, you see. Um, because books and videos tend to really communicate technique. But these people are communicating, communicating to you not only technique, but, uh, but life experiences, you see. And all, the, and all these experiences in one life add to the texture of what one does. Uh, not only does a mentor uh, add to your repertoire, but he can actually add he adds another dimension to your, uh, your understanding in terms of what it's really all about emotionally. You know? oh, another thing I wanted to say that um, in regards to mentors, uh, it isn't necessary that one's mentors um, be directly involved with, the, with your favorite type of magic. In other words, just because my favorite magic is card manipulation, uh, that doesn't mean that, I, uh, that all I would ever do is associate with card manipulators, whether they be my own age or older. Um, it's, it's important that one's mentors uh, uh, come in different varieties, so to speak. Uh, for instance, when I was a kid, I worked for uh, Jackie Flosso from the Flosso Hornman Magic Shop. Uh, Alan and Jackie Flosso, uh, they were great guys. Uh, they, they were not practitioners of manipulation. Uh, although they were professional magicians, but what they were, what they were, they were two old pros who, who lived show business, uh, and they had a lot to say, and they had, had a lot to convey, uh, both as magicians as well as human beings. And there were, there were all sorts of, all sorts of, um, 
all sorts of um, ideas and forms of wisdom that they conveyed to me, which had absolutely nothing to do with manipulation, and sometimes not even much to do with magic, but just uh, a lot to do with uh, uh, a lot to do with uh, what it means to be a human being, and or what it, in relationship to uh, uh, just being a uh, a moral person or a person, uh, whether you, you know, out of magic, you know, it's just um, there were, when you hang around the right people, uh, you assimilate, you assimilate all kinds of things, not just magic, <clears throat> and all this helps to. You see, the greater the person, the greater the artist. Even if you're not that technically great, the greater a human being you become. The more evolved, let's put it this way: the more evolved the human being, the more evolved you will be as an artist. If that's what you want to be, you see. So uh, the biggest mistake that people make is to think that just because I can do all these things uh, and do them well, somehow I'm superior. The, the major thing that one has to become as a person, to become a person, hopefully as moral as you can possibly be, you know, uh, as spiritual as you can be, in the highest sense of the word, and if you're these things, then anything you do is going to be enhanced. So as I said, it isn't necessary always to hang around uh, card manipulators or coin manipulators or close-up guys or whatever, uh, if that's your thing. The important thing is to, uh, both in and out magic, to hang around people who have something to give. So that way, uh, so that way you, can, uh, you can enhance yourself as a human being. And once you do that, everything you do is going to be better. When you're a kid and uh, uh, just starting magic and you've got all these insecurities, which is why you want to do magic in the first place, <laughs> you've got all these insecurities, uh, your whole focus is on the mastery of what you're doing. And, and the, the greater you become uh, 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 with all these techniques, the, the greater you think you are. But then as you, as you get along in life, you realize that the whole point of these techniques is to be able to get past these techniques to the essential issue, which is to be an expressive human being. The, and you realize that these, all these techniques, I don't care what field of magic you're in, all these techniques, the whole point of this is to get past them so you could use them as a conduit to expressing yourself to people who are watching you. That's the whole point. Because it essentially doesn't matter what you do. As long as, that, as, long as, uh, as, long as what you do is an expression of what you truly are inside. And like I've said to you, um, if, if somebody came to me, if Siegfried, or, or, or who, who I know slightly, if Siegfried came to me and said, Jeff, here, here's my whole show. I want to retire now. Here's my entire show. Here, here are all the tigers, all the things, all the illusions he gave to me. And I said, Siri, thank you, but no thanks. Would mean nothing. Because I, I, that's not what I'm about. I could not express myself. I'm, I'm better off with a pack of cards, at least doing stand-up magic. So it's, it's even though the tricks are important, uh, the essential issue is that, that the material that one uses the medium of one's expression, and, and by that I don't mean just the, the medium of magic, but the medium within the medium, the specific materials one uses, the, the specific objects, the specific routines, have to be really an expression of your inner self. You see. For instance, um, let me make an analogy. Um, I think it's generally agreed that Frank Sinatra was a truly great singer, but every time he sang a Beatles song, I couldn't care less. Not that he was inferior to the Beatles, it's just that it had nothing to do with him. It's not what he was about. And he wasn't really being himself. That's not, uh, the way they wrote songs uh, was not the way he expressed himself, you see. Even though, even though they were dealing with the same themes, love, this, that. Um, so essentially, it, one of the, uh, so in other words, one of the great issues of, of any artist is to, f is to find the right point of view. You have to find the right point of view. The, the right way in which to say what you have to say subjectively, you know. All these techniques are universal, they belong to everybody. However, but they truly belong to only those people uh, who can really express themselves through them. I can't do, I really can't do magic sitting down at a table with a pack of cards. It's not how I express myself. There are some things I can do tactically, and sometimes I can do some of these things better than guys I've seen do them, but I couldn't do them because I, I can't put them across the same way because it has nothing to do with what I'm really about. And this is the essential. Um, uh, uh, everything I'm going to show you on this, on this DVD is extremely important. Once you've achieved mastery, uh, like I said, the whole point is to put it behind, put it behind you and go to the next level, which is uh, uh, to express your own subjective inner self. The correct cards to use are, uh, well, ideally the cards you want are um, 
are uh, a playing card that has a, has a linen finish on the surface. You know, that's the type of uh, uh, texture of the stock. You need a linen uh, finish card, uh, possibly, uh, if possible, um, uh, an air cushion surface. In other words, there are tiny holes in it, uh, and, uh, which makes the card more pliable uh, as opposed to a smooth finish. Uh, you can get either one. Uh, and if you can find them uh, today, uh, though it's difficult since they've changed the way they make cards in the last 20, 25 years, you need a card that's covered with lacquer. Now, uh, uh, today, as you probably know, the cards are not coated with lacquer. They're coated with um, what they call uh, with a kind of silicon. And I think the, the term is, a, the technical term is UV coating. But uh, in any case, almost all plant cards are, co are coated with silicon. What you need, ideally, is to find a card that, that has a lacquer coating. Because you see, when you're, when you're trying to do uh, card fanning, whether it's for productions or whether for it's a two-hand fan, uh, you want a certain amount of resistance and drag on the card. You don't really want a slippery card, because if, if it's slippery, you have no control. And also, uh, the silicon coating tends to make the cards brittle, you see. Now, even though you need, a, uh, you need a pliable card, you don't want a flexible card, because a flexible card, even though it bends, tends to be very brittle, and they have a tendency to slip and crack. You want a, a card that'll get a little softer, not too soft, because if the cards are too soft, there's no resistance. You need a certain amount of resistance in order to rinse the back palm cards, otherwise you have nothing to grab onto. Um, uh, if you want to spin a card, you need the resistance, you see. But now, if, if there's too much resistance, you can't do a thing. They won't bend. They won't bend. They'll slip and they'll crack. So here, um, now for years, I used to use a, a, a card called a Crusader playing cards. They were made, uh, they were made uh, by Western Publishing in, in Wisconsin. Uh, they were the best card in the world. They were kind of a, an overall uh, B-back design. They were cl close to flesh colored, and they were, they were absolutely wonderful. Uh, they were a, a poker size card. I prefer poker size. I've got a large hand. You can use bridge size if you've got a small hand, but if you've got a reasonably large hand, I, I, I suggest you use um, poker cards because you've got a better grip, you see. And, and also, the, card, the larger the card, the more it can be seen from a distance. Um, as I said, uh, these cards were great. They had a, uh, an off-white lacquer coating, uh, which is, unfortunately uh, doesn't exist anymore uh, on cards. So what you have to do, you have to try to compensate. So what you want to do is you want to get a card. Uh, in America, I tend to use B cards. There are other type of uh, uh, there are other brands of cards which are similar, but uh, I still think by and large the Bs tend to be the best. However, what you've got to do, you've got to try. You've got to. You're probably going to have to buy a number of packs of cards to find one to find one deck uh, that is uh, that is not too slippery. You see, um, uh, when a when a pack. Uh, of cards goes through at the beginning of the run, they tend to be really, really coated. I'm not sure exactly how they make them, but I, I, I get the impression that, they, that they're, they go through on sheets and then they're cut. When you get the, the sheets that go in later, they tend, they tend to be a little less silicon on them. So therefore, you're a little bit better off th than you would have been. Of course, the, another thing about cards, which is funny, uh, is that uh, if, a, if the pack of cards gets cold, they're going to get very glassy. There's something about there's something about the the, uh, the silicon uh, uh, that has has a tendency to make the cards glassy to begin with. But when the cards are cold, they get really glassy and they don't fan well. You don't have that you don't have that silky feel. They won't behave right. Um, uh, with lacquer, if if you had put the cards in your pocket, body heat body heat would so, somehow uh, add to the softness of the cards, and then the silicon would really really work like silk. Now, if you uh, keep the cards in your body throughout most of the day, they tend to be pretty decent, even though there's silicon on them. If you leave them around, like I did for the last hour, and you leave them on a table in a cold room, you'll notice they'll get glassy, you see. So, um, and then believe it or not, you, the most skillful manipulator, the most skillful performer is going to have trouble with the cards, and you won't perform as well as you should be. Uh, many times I, I, I can only perform at about 75, 80 percent uh, 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 to the level that I could work normally. Now these cards, uh, about an hour ago, they were uh, they performed. There was a certain amount of resistance and drag. Now I find that they're glassy. One thing that you don't want to do, uh, you don't want to perform with any strain. It's very bad to strain. A sign of a master is when there's no strain. No matter how skillful, he's at a point where uh, what you're doing with your hand should be effortless. There should be no strain. And as soon as you, you as soon as you, uh, as soon as you have a pack of cards which is not up to snuff there's going to be a certain amount of strain because, first of all, you're making stress because you're angry that the cards aren't behaving the right way. And, um, uh, 
and therefore you start to strain. You see? And as soon as there's strain, you're going to have imperfections. You won't be relaxed. You know, you can be the most nervous person in the world. But once you're in front of people, you've got to appear very relaxed, you see? Because if you're nervous, then you make the audience nervous. And they can't relax and enjoy the show. Um, so uh, I suggest that you, you get the best pocket card you can, all right, so you don't encounter these problems. Or at least you don't encourage these problems, you see? Now, already, uh, already uh, I'm not happy. I was, ha I was happier an hour ago before we started the shooting because these cards were, for cards that were uh, basically silicon coated, they weren't bad. But hanging around in the cold studio for an hour, they're glassy. Now, I'll show you a pack of cards which, uh, which uh, since, it, uh, since it, has, it has a better stock, it, it's closer to the older stock. It's not perfect, but it's closer to the older stock, also made by the same company. Um, They'll fan better, even though they've, they've gotten a bit glassier now. Look, I'll show you the difference. Yeah, stud playing cards. Also U.S. Going away. Uh, of course, uh, since you, you can't feel the cards, uh, it'll be hard for you to really understand uh, what I'm experiencing, but I think you might be able to see it. Now, this card, if you take a close look, it's slicker. You can hear that, that snap which is great if you're a gambler or you're, or you're a dealer, but if you're a magician, you don't want this... A close-up guy doesn't matter, but you don't want this snappy, you see, uh, which means the card is, is probably going to slip on you, and, and, and when you're making a fan, it's not going to, it's not going to give. Now, if you know... Let me give it... Let me, hold on. Let me get a card that's, uh, that has more white space on it. Hold on. Ah, these are pinochle cards. <laughs> Excuse me. Anyway, if you look closely, you'll notice that the... The cards have more, there's more grain on the card. And you can see, look, and it's, it's much more pliable, it's soft, it's, it's, it's much more, you know, look, you see the difference. You can hear that, and here, look, there's, it's, you can hear it's, you don't hear that snap, it's softer. And that's the kind of card you want. Now, unfortunately, these cards, uh, uh, these cards are, 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 are border cards, they've got a white border on the back. Now, uh, normally for back palming, you don't want that, because obviously, if you're going to be hiding cards, uh, you want the card to blend in with the color of your flesh, you know. So I said for most Caucasian people, a, a reddish card or a kind of a light reddish card blends in better for the back palming. A white card, it's okay for practice, but you're, you're going to, with one card, you may get away with it, but when you start getting into more cards, your finger's going to be spread, you're going to see that white thing. The only exception to the rule is when you, if you start working with gl white gloves, for instance, white cotton gloves, in which case, it'll help. What I, in fact, what I do, uh, as, I'll, as I'll show you later, I, I, put, uh, I either put a blank card on the back or I put uh, um, uh, a plain card with a, a blank back on it and put it on the, on the back of the card. So if you're wearing white gloves, you're still, you're still not going to see them, which is nice. Yeah. Uh. As I said before, the, uh, the basis of, of all card manipulation is the back palming of a playing card, of a single playing card. And this is the way it's done. I'll show you an exposed view. Well, I'll do it without the movement. Let me just show you the, the technical thing. On the front. I'll just do it technically. I won't perform it. This is what it looks like in slow motion. Well, what's going on is uh, the two middle fingers, the second and third finger, are going to bend inwards. See, And the, f the first finger and the pinky are going to go, go along the sides of the card and grab it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll do it again from the other side. Mm-hmm. All right, now, I'll do it a little bit faster, but slow enough so you can still see it. Now I'll reproduce the card, okay? Now that's, that's the basis of it all, and that's the original method. Now, if you want to do it, if you want to do it in such a way that the card really isn't seen, uh, you've got to do it with a, with a kind of a flourish, right? Now that's a, te a technique that I uh, first used by Channing Pollock. 
what I'm doing is, instead of just doing this, I'm pointing downward. I'm pointing downward. And in that moment, I execute the slight. And I come up. And you know, it's for some reason or another, it, it kind of, uh, it kind of uh, gives a greater illusion for the eye. It looks like the card melts away. And if you do this, you can kind of see the move. But if you, if you come down and then come up, the card just seems to melt away. See that? I'll do it again. Then you reproduce it. Now, here's, here's what you need to do if you want to show both sides of the hand. Though I really don't... I really don't like doing it in practice much, but it's uh, I practice in the sense of performance. But it's a good thing to practice uh, uh, with. All right, so you vanish the card, uh, and now you do the. Now you do. The, now that is the most skillful person, myself included. Eight times out of ten, you're going to flash a bit of the card, unless somebody is is just at the right angle, which is a little to my left. They're going to catch a flash, but I'll show you what the technique is. Look, you've got the card back palmed, and that was a little better. But I, but I've developed the technique, a superior technique, so that way the card is never seen. But first, let me let me explain the the, the basis uh, uh, the basis of, of this technique. Now, in most most classical treatises, they they tell you to use the thumb when executing the back and front palm. Now, that is really not a good idea because you're permitting you're permitting uh, a lot more exposure of the playing card. I can't even do it anymore, but I'll show you what they said. They said you're supposed to bring the thumb down and do that, but look what happens. You're going to see the card more. So you want to uh, do it without uh, using the thumb at all. Look, you use the middle finger. The thumb is kept straight up at all times, and it, it always stays. Uh, it always stays out. See, now I bend, the middle finger comes over the top, and then back down again. You don't use, there's no thumb. And this, how, this is how it looks like. I'll do it in slow motion for you so you can actually see what's going on. It's here. That. What's, blocking, what's blocking your view of the card, if it's done right, is, is essentially the wrist. So you're here, it's down, up, down there, or you can come down, up, go to the side, and come down. That well, I'll do it again here. It's here, down, up to the ceiling, cross down. Yeah, no thumb. When you come back, you're just pressing the bottom of the cut against the, uh, the flesh of your thumb. You see, that's what's going on there. Right, that's it. Now, what I uh, what I don't like about it is, as I said, is that I mean, it's a good thing to show off with. Uh, there are certain moments, uh, there are certain times uh, when you're really grooving, as we say, that you feel as though you can do it and get away with it and your timing will be right. But if, you're, if, you're, if the angle is not quite right, I mean, most people, um, most people in the audience are going to catch that. They're gonna catch, if they're over there or if they're too far here, they're going to catch it. So all you're really doing is showing off. Uh, I mean, they'll still be impressed because it's skillful, but if you're really trying to, if you're really trying to mystify them before they eye, uh, it's best to avoid it in practice, in performance. Just use it. Just use it. Um, uh, just combine it to your practice sessions. Uh, okay. Now, when you're when you're first starting, when you when you produce the card or reproduce the card, as it were, uh, you'll do it this way. But I what I prefer is what I prefer is the fingertip production. Uh, just who originated it, I don't know, but I, it's my uh, my preferred uh, my preferred method, which is the card appears. Now you can use that either for a single card, or you can, or you can use it for the last card in in a production routine. Uh, it, I find it much more elegant. In fact, I find it difficult now to do it the other way. I'm not. That's why I'm doing it. That's why I'm doing it this way. One moment. It just seems more magical. So the card melts away. Boom! And there it is. Well, here's the classical. Well, actually, the original method is to bend the, uh, the fingers towards the palm and, and to bring the thumb over the top of the fingertips and draw it. Um, 
it's, if you're going to just do it that way, it's better to use the Cardini technique, which is to come through the fingers, to bend the fingers just slightly, and then come through the top and to snap it in place. I'll do that dead on. Yeah. If you're doing it here, so you, what you don't want to do is this. That's the old method. You don't want to do that, because obviously you, you, you catch a flash of the card. If you use the Cardini technique, which is to come through, through the first and second finger, it's much cleaner. You're essentially bending about a fraction of the way. The thumb comes in and then, let's see. Now what I prefer is the fingertip production, which is like that, and I'll show you how that works. All right, now watch carefully. It's, it's very difficult to describe in words, but watch it. I bend my fingers. Now the middle finger comes forward and all right, goes along the, the bottom, the bottom uh, back of the card, and it kind of goes over the top of my, the back of my first finger. Look, I'll do it without the card. Watch the second finger. See it? Yeah. Uh, now watch it all together. Well, I'll do it without vanishing. Here's the production. Now, instead of doing this, or better still, uh, or even instead of doing this, which is better still, I want to do this. One, two, three. Okay. If, you want to, if you want to be cutesy, you can kind of do it like you're shooting a gun. <laughs> if you were going to do this all together, you would do it something, you would do it something like that. Pump. Or something, you want to come a little higher. Now, I, uh, I, I want to show you uh, uh, another technique for doing the back and front, which I feel is a bit superior. It's something that I came up with only about two, two and a half years ago. Um, as I said, I've come to the conclusion that you really don't want to, uh, you really don't want to do the, the back and front palm in front of an audience. Uh, if you're wearing gloves, you might get away with it, but you tend not to get away with it with the greater, with the greater part of the audience. So here's something I came up with, uh, and it's justified. Uh, it's justified uh, because of the uh, dramatic potential behind it. Uh, after I produce a number of cards, uh, what I do is I come to the last card. I do a kind of a dramatic, I do a kind of a dramatic turnaround, and do it. Yeah. So I've got the I've got the cover of the body to do the move, but the fa the fact that the hand's stationary, uh, what it comes off, it comes off as a kind of like a, a dramatic form of expression. It is not a, it's not a natural movement, but, but it has what we call a poetic license, you know, artistic license. It's a dramatic point. I'm, I'm, I'm emphasizing it in a, in a very dramatic way what's been going on. I'm not showing off, but I'm just emphasizing the fact that, you know, I'm just there with my hand. So, so in other words, what they think, you, they just think you're doing this. See, we're going over the the standard back palm. This is mm -hmm. the basic. You said it was the basic, the basis for all card manipulation. Right. So I want to make sure I got it right. So right. If, just go over that with me. The, okay. Every step there. Okay. All right. Um, well, in performance, you should begin with the card in a vertical position. Okay. All right. And then, right, and then you would you would tilt it so that it's uh, horizontal to the floor. But anyway, for practice, you can begin this way. Hmm? Okay. So what you want to do, you want to bend, uh, bend the two middle fingers in against the card like that. So you're basically placing the card over the two, the two center fingers, the two middle fingers. And the first finger and the pinky open it and they come over the sides of the card. They grip it, they grip it so it doesn't fall. However, the two middle fingers push upward and outward so the card revolves, you see, and it's clipped. Okay. You see that? Is there a particular area in your fingers where it lies like... Are in between the, t the two knuckles, or and now, well, how since far do you go? Everybody has a, a, a different size hand, so it's whatever you're comfortable with. For a single card, it's wherever you're comfortable with. So, I like it. I like it just a touch below uh, 
the top joints of the fingers. See, about not not there. You want it a little bit below. A little deeper. Okay. Yeah, you know, a little bit deeper. A little bit below the. There you go. And of course, you don't want the card sticking yeah. out over the top. Which, sticking which, out. It's fine. No, it's not. No, I meant you don't want it sticking over the top. A certain amount of cards always going to be sticking out. Okay. And it doesn't matter because when it's dead on, you really don't, and your hands moving, you don't see it. Okay. You see. So it's here. Good. Right. Uh, another thing I noticed, another thing you'll notice, uh, since I know your fingers were, were spread, uh, one of the difficulty, difficulties that has to be overcome uh, is, uh, is the, um, the weakness of the muscles. What you've got to do, you've got to do this enough, uh, enough time so that we, not only uh, do you have the technique down, but you have to sort of build up a certain amount of strength in the fingers in, in order to be able to do it. That's one, that's one reason why a lot of people stay away from this stuff. Yeah. because. You're not only learning technique, you're actually, in a certain sense, becoming a kind of bodybuilder, even yeah. though it's only in the fingers. Yeah. You know, uh, so um, you've got, that's another problem, because as you're developing this, you've got to be increasing the strength in the fingers right. all the time. In fact, you'll notice, you'll notice you'll reach a point where you can't go any further. Okay. So you've got to leave, leave it alone for some weeks or even a month sometimes, and then go back to it uh, to get to the next. It's like, a, it's like a staircase. You're going here for a while, then you go there, then there, then there, because it, sometimes you're going to strain your hands that are going to hurt. So you've got to stay away from it from three or four days or a week and then go back to it. And then as, you're, as, you're, as the muscles in your hand acclimate to the new level of strength, you see. So you eat a lot of proteins in that time, get the muscles. Uh, right, yeah, right. Well, then you stop and then you, you know, it's like, yeah. you, it's like if you're just starting push-ups, you don't do 50. Yeah. You do five and then, and then for three days and then a week later you do 10 and then slowly you work up to, to 50 push-ups. But if you do it, you're going to kill yourself if you do it right away. So here you may do this... Uh, you just do one card, you know, for a half an hour a day, two hours, or three hours a day for a few weeks, and then a few weeks later, or a month later, yeah, uh, you know, it, you can add a card. It goes more, you know, but it takes a while uh, to, to develop the strength in the fingers to the point where it doesn't hurt. Okay. So, and you'll notice that it goes together. The, the technique and the strength build kind of together, you know. Okay. So it's that. Because uh, the problem most begin beginners encounter is that the card tends to, the bottom of the card tends to pop. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. See, it's that. All right, now, when, all right, now well, you really should start with it vertically. And just, you're just basically tilting it. All right, and then it's just that. All right, so it's that. All right. Now, right, what you want is to sit. You don't want to do the, the back and front with a thumb for two reasons. One is you don't want the audience to catch a flash, so you want to use that middle finger. However, that has a second advantage. Okay. And what it is is if you, when you progress to more cards. All right, I've got two cards here. When you progress to, to more than one card, if you use the, the thumb for back and front, look what you get. Uh. And say, if you try to do the back and front with more than one card, you, and that's, not, that's not the point where you want to produce a card. That's good if you want to produce a card, mm -hmm. but not if you're going to do the back and front. And also, you'll find that the middle finger, without the th middle finger, keeps them aligned. Yeah. It keeps them lined up, otherwise you, you start to get this. Now, go over that back and front move with me. Mm -hmm. That's something I, I've always liked, but mm -hmm. I've never really got. Yeah, yeah. So it's here, here, and the best way to do it, well, let me, let me, let's do the, the basic technique without the action. Okay. Here it is, look. Uh, back palm the card, right. Okay, keep your hand parallel to the floor, more or less. Now, just bend the fingers in as though you're about to make a fist. Now, the middle finger, without letting the, the, the card go, the middle finger comes over the top. Good. Okay. And, and now, it pushes the card about three quarters of the way down, but as you do that, the other finger and the other two uh, side fingers come up to meet it. Watch. You bend it. The middle finger comes over the top. And now you push gently and slowly. And when the card's about a little more than halfway, a little more than halfway, the, the other three fingers, this one and these two, start to straighten out to meet it. Okay. Into a fist. Yeah. yeah. Some, sometimes... Uh, now, th this part, look, you know, it's easy. Start this way. Um, all right. You'll find that, it, of course, it's much easier to do that. Because all you, you know, you don't bend your thumb. Remember, the thumb is always out. Okay. Uh, even if the card's going to drop, let the card drop. Okay. But uh, resist the tendency to try to okay. take control of the card with the thumb. Forget the thumb. So this part is easy because all you're really doing, you're pushing the card against the, uh, the base of the thumb here, and then just doing that. That part's easy. Okay. See? See how easy it is? Okay. okay. The hard part is coming back. So let's start here again. Great. So that part is after a short while shouldn't be a problem. Okay. 
Now you see you're about to lose the card. Yeah. That's what. That's the, the beginning of the problem when you're going to go the other way. Mm -hmm. You you don't want it. You don't want it to go too deep or too far yeah. out. You don't want it too far in above the things that too far back. All right. Okay. So start again. Yeah. And once you can do this well, then you get the other part. I guess. Uh, here, well, let's try it sideways. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it out. See that? Okay. Okay. Now once. All right. Now let's let's start this way again. You want to reposition it so you get it the way you like it? Okay. Okay. Right All right, so we do that. Okay. All right, now once you're there, what you want to do is, you, you're basically reverse, reversing it. You bend your hand in. Good. Now, uh, also resist the tendency to, to uh, uh, loosen the pressure too much. You want to come over with the middle finger. All right. I would, uh, I would do it with your hand a little bit. Otherwise, you're going to drop it. Okay. And you want to push that about halfway, a little more than halfway, as the other fingers come up to meet it. Yeah, Good. This, this third Good. finger already wants to pop out. I know, I know. If it pops out, let it pop out. Okay. You, you did it. Okay, let, let's start again from here. Good. Okay. I right, said, so remember, you want to bend those fingers in. You, now, you don't have to grip the card that tightly. Okay. I'm uh, just afraid I'm going to drop it. Yeah, of course, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I, yeah, when you're beginning with this, uh, you have a tendency to overgrip because yeah. you're afraid it, because your muscles are not accustomed to the feeling. Yeah. Uh, when as you become proficient and your muscles get stronger, you actually will, you actually uh, you actually won't overgrip because you'll have confidence. So it's this little, okay, boom, good. Now you make your fist come over the top. That's the part, and then just push it in. Good, very good, very good. And right, now we'll try it with two cards. Okay. Now of course with two cards you've got you've got a little more pressure there, so you're going to have to keep keep more pressure on the finger. So all right. But you'll notice it helps to, to, to keep the cards aligned. You do that. Good. It's really not that much more difficult than you push them. Yeah. No, you didn't do that exactly right. Um, yeah, I think I cheated. With you, my cheat, you cheated. You <laughs> cheated. Just do that. And now relax. Don't be in a hurry. Do that. Can you finger up here? And push it. Yeah. See, I, now I know, here, I'm... Okay, now you know why? Because the card is getting misaligned because yeah. your fingers uh, uh, have not become accustomed mm -hmm. to the amount of pressure you need. But you don't worry about that. So this is what's happening. My middle finger is not coming over enough yeah. to well, be able to yeah, grab it. Yeah, well, okay. Um, a lot of this, you know, uh, a lot of this is a feel more than, uh, more than a, a technique. You have to feel it. So you have to just yeah. keep doing it and yeah. over and over. Okay, so here, like, so you're here. Uh, okay, you start here. Okay. And don't be, don't, when you're going down, don't be afraid to push as far down as you can go. Okay, fine. All right, I'm not in that. Okay. Now, if you find it's too far down, then, then you don't have to push that far down, so that way, that way you'll have space to come over the top. That was yeah, very good. Right. So it's here. Now, remember, you need, you need, uh, you need it to be f uh, far down enough so that way the fingers can conceal it, but, you know, but not that far where you're going to lose it. So, that's good. So, yeah. so, you notice, so you notice what you've got. Uh, so this really helps you keep the cards aligned as well, you see. And now, now let me... Let me show you how to produce two cards, all right? Now, remember, let's go back to the one card first. Hold on. Now, the one card, remember, remember you want to do that. Okay, now, as opposed to doing... All right, now... So I just learned yeah. this. Okay. That's not going to look good. No. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on a second. Are you here? Okay. Back palm it. Okay, now, let's just start the beginning's technique. Just come and just do that. Good. Okay, now, this time, instead of putting the thumb over the top, try to put the thumb between the first and second fingers. When you're coming back, do this. Can you do that? With the thumb here. Mm -hmm. Can you do that? Perfect. I will try it again. Don't, and when you're beginning, don't worry about speed. All right. Okay. So it's just, you're here. Come about, I come, I don't know, just a fraction of the way. You can come a little, little deeper. And then, and at the same time, tr see if you can do this. If you could try to move your, the first finger back without See, don't move it and don't come up because it's going to spring out. You want, you want to do is keep the pressure there, but you want that finger to move back just a fraction so you can go over the thumb. Ah. You got it. Perfect. Here. Yeah. All right. You want to just do that. You want to come. Yeah. Now, you don't want to go all the way in like that. Mm -hmm. Try to come about. Look where my hand is. I come about there, and then I do it. I don't come all the way. I come about. A quarter of the way, and I do it. Okay. okay so. Yeah. Here. Right. Just a little bit. That's it. Okay. Now, let's try two cards. 
Now, the more, by, now by the way, the more cards you use, uh, now, you, now let's recapitulate one moment. Uh, go back to one card. Let's recapitulate one moment. Watch me. Okay. Now, if you're using one card, it's okay to, ha to, have, the, to have the card gripped uh, about at this point. But when you start using more than one card, it, it's, especially if you're going to be producing them singly, you want to be able to grip those cards, uh, not here, but a little further up on the finger. And you'll see why. Well, maybe you better watch me first. Okay. I'm going to watch. Now, if you're doing one card, you see, uh, you can even you can even have the card at the uh, at the joints, right? If you want to do one card, uh, or I still prefer it a little further back. Uh, anyway, but if you're going to do more than one card, if you want to produce them singly, you've got to produce one card and still retain the other card without it dropping to the floor. So what you need to do, so uh, again, since you've got to reach through here, you've got to produce that card and retain the other one. Now, if you have the if you're gripping the cards too far when there's more than one card, you're going to have more of a tendency to do that, you see. So let's try it. Watch. So now you want to retain the card. Uh, instead of there, it, it's about around the second joint, or even a little bit beyond the second joint. Now watch. See, I, and of course, when I do that, I've trained my finger to stay parallel, to stay close to. I don't bring the finger up. If I do that, it pops out. See? So watch it. I'll do it. Oh, I'll show it. Yeah. I'll show you so the camera can see it. You know, the card is not, one card would, is okay to be there when you've got more than one card. Those cards have to be a little further back there because you need, first of all, you, you, you need the room to grab, but you, uh, you've got a, a much greater grip because that finger's got to be more flexible. It's got to come back further for you to get in there, and you need to retain that second card. See? And of course, when, when you're doing it rapidly, you, wanna re, you want that card to come out as parallel as possible. You want the card to come out parallel. You don't want it to come out on an angle. Yeah. So, so you want to get that. In any case, but, but these are all things that come with practice. But anyway, anyway, more than one card, you want to start gripping further back, you see? See? I'll do it in slow motion. Another thing, uh, another thing that you shouldn't do, uh, the card should pop as, as quickly as possible. A lot of people, they do it, but it kind of drags and it goes slow. Okay, now there are two problems. Uh, well, today you've got the one problem is since the cards are silicon, your, your hands tend to, your finger tends to slip over the cards since they're all silicon. Yeah. That's another reason why you don't want silicon. Or, or if, if you have it, you want to rub those cards and try to get that stuff off. Uh, the other reason is people have a tendency, uh, especially when you're, especially when a guy is beginning and he, he doesn't have strength in his fingers, he tends to want to over control the cards. So you, you, you go so deep with the, you go so deep with the finger that it takes a long, a much longer time to go over the top. So you don't, you don't need to go so deep. You, you just pull the card, just put the thumb over the, this bottom edge of the card. If you go, look, if I go really deep, look what happens. It takes a long time to get that card over. Yeah. So, but if I look, I don't need to go that far. Look, all I have to do is... Just like almost just on the index. Yeah. Yeah, almost the index or even maybe a touch more, but looks. So now look, so now, so the card springs faster, you see. So in any case, but you, in any case, when you're doing that, you don't want to, unless you're really skillful, you don't want to bring that caught up because that's going to happen, you see. That's my problem. Well, it used to be so my you want to you want to keep <laughs> that. You always want to keep that finger pressing towards this point. Uh, uh, see. Right. Okay. Yeah, eventually, it, you know, it, all these things they have to go into your DNA, so you're not yeah. you're not conscious <laughs> of them. But you got to be conscious right now of keeping the fingers together, even though you're making room. Look, I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do it sideways. So you, it's. I'll do it. So I'm not coming all the way. I'm not coming all the way in. It, was, it takes forever to do that. You want to be just. There it is. That's a good. And then you can do the second one. Or the, of course, the last one. I always like to do the fingertip, but it, that's optional. So, see. Let's now. I'll, I'll show you three cards. I won't ask you to do it, but you know, give me a third card. Um, the more cards you're using, the more reason to do it this way. So now I've got like one, two, three. One, two, three. Now, of course, uh, you can only add more cards uh, as your strength builds up. But the paradox is that you need more cards in order to build up the strength. So what you want to do is you want to do one card for a while. You want to just practice the back and front stuff, whether, whether you're doing this, whether you're just doing that, or whether you're doing that. You want to practice that for so many weeks or maybe even months, and then you can add a card, you know, uh, and then you stay with two cards for a while, and then after a while, if you feel as you can handle more, 
Mm -hmm. You've got the three cards because, of course, the more cards, the more pressure is necessary. Yeah. The more strength, and strength you're going to need to hold those cards in place. But at the same time, you need that because that's what's going to build up your... That's like, that's like adding you know, 10 or 20 or 30 push-ups. Every card you're adding, you're adding more push-ups, you see. So, so you've got to have that. Um, and eventually, you get to a point where you can do a lot. Now, when you start getting, in, when you start getting into more cards, as I said, uh, the more tendency the cards have to slip, especially now with the new silicon yeah. cards. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll show you the difference with, with thinner cards which have more of a grain and less, okay. and less coating on them, okay? Now, uh, I was always taught that when you do a vanish, mm -hmm. a long time ago, was, mm -hmm. uh, to do the move on the way up. Mm -hmm. And you were saying that uh, you do it a different way. I was wondering if you could show me your way of doing it or the way that you do yeah, well, it. Well, it's not my way. It's, it's, to my knowledge, it's Pollock's way. Mm -hmm. um, in a way, you're still tossing it up, but you just going down before you go up. Okay. So you're saying, you know, so you're not doing, but you'll notice it's almost, it's almost, unless you do it really rapidly, it's almost impossible to do it without being seen. Because look, it, a production, uh, a production, uh, a production always works faster than a vanish. Yes. You know, it's just the way, the way you, I guess the way your figures are built. So you have to have some kind of, some kind of optical misdirection to do the vanish. So instead of doing it this way, it's much better if, if you bring the card down, and then, I guess because of the structure of the hand, and the hands have a tendency, the fingers have a tendency to work faster when the card is pointing to the floor. As you come up, look, it just seems to melt. See the difference? It's just, so what you're doing, you, you, I mean, you could start that way, but I think it's better to start this way. Then you go parallel with the card to the, to the fingers, and then go parallel to the floor. And then, as you, on the upswing, you, you do the back palming and move it with a certain rapidity. You see, when the card's gone. Hmm? So it's this way. Here, here it is. It just seems to melt. And there it is. It's like it happens so slow, but it looks smooth. Yeah, it just, like it just seems to melt. See it? Here it is. It just melts. Voila. Hmm? Yeah. yeah, I'll do it from, watch it from, watch it from behind. Watch it from behind. Yeah. So, so first I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to pivot that card so it's parallel with my fingers, but you just come to, towards the floor, it melts, and it's gone. Okay. I'll, do it with, I'll do it without the arm movement. It's a, that's how you do it. It's, as you, on, the, on the upswing, it's on the upswing movement from the floor that you back palm the card. It just melts away. And you'll find, it's really interesting, you'll find that if you do that, if you do that one flowing action, it's... oh. You can almost just go right into the. It just lends itself. It just lends itself going right into the back and front. It's right from of, back, back. Yeah, right from there you can do it. You don't need to, but it's. Uh, well, so you can kind of. All right. So you would just do that. But there are times that if if you if you're grooving, you can just kind of swing right into the. So it's you know you can just you just can kind of just swing. So that, so. Did you uh, did you have uh, the opportunity to meet Chang Pollock? Did you get yes, that? yes. Actually, uh, well, we met officially uh, about a little more than two years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, he was a hero to me, like he was to many young magicians. Uh, and oddly enough, uh, well, we had kind of known of each other. He knew of me because of my book Street Magic. Uh, the first edition That's of Street the, book, the first book that I saw. The first edition of Street Magic was published in '77, and he had apparently had collected that, mm -hmm. and he knew of me. Uh, uh, what he didn't know was that we had met years before, when I was about a 17 or 18 year old boy. I had gone backstage uh, to see him when he was appearing at the Latin Quarter in New York City, and we spoke briefly, and I got an autograph. Uh, but that that was you know uh, a long lost memory for him. Yeah. So uh, officially, we met. We've had some mutual friends over the years, but we finally met, and I came to his house, and he said, oh, finally. And we sat down, and we had quite a nice conversation, and I went out to dinner uh, with him and his wife, and Johnny Thompson, and his friend Johnny Thompson and his wife, and it was quite nice. And uh, we, we've spoken over the phone a number of times uh, uh, when I went back to New York, which is where I, I've lived for many years. Um, in fact, one of the, uh, well, and as you know, Channing passed away in the last days, uh, which is a a great loss to all of us. Uh, um, it's sad because I, what I had taken back with me this time was a program of a, uh, of a, of a private show he had done back in uh, 1955. I have a, a friend of mine, uh, 
uh, who had worked with him. I, have a, uh, I had a friend who also passed away, uh, Francis Bruin. He was uh, the world's greatest juggler of his time. Uh -huh. He worked with Chatting and uh, his widow had given me a copy of a program where they worked together on what you would call, a, I guess, a club date or a private show uh, for the men's hat industries. And it has a uh, uh, young Channing Pollock and Francis Bruin on the show, you know. And I was going to show it to him. I'm sure he didn't have it. And alas, it was not to be. Yeah. But anyway, um, but I have the memory. Yeah. I have the memory. Channing was another one of those great role models we spoke about before, mm -hmm. you know, because he was not only a, a great artist, he was a gentleman. Yeah. And he was a spiritually evolved person, you know. Uh, with Channing, even, even though he... Even though he had the stature on stage and off, you never got a sense that he was a show off. Yeah. Let's see. Oh. I just want, I want you to watch me do it and tell me, me, tell me what I'm doing wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to do it really slow. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This might, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're not doing anything wrong. And then, see, that's the part, I, my pinky comes out, but mm -hmm. I'm going Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. No, you're not. You're not really doing anything wrong. You just have to do it. Everything just to maybe a touch faster. Okay, and then smooth it out. Yeah. Now I remember you. You pr you produced a card yeah. like you ended up like this. Yeah, right. that, that's called a fingertip production. Okay. And am I grabbing? It's the same thing essentially, but uh, I'm I'm using that that's middle right. finger to to come around. That's right? correct. And a thumb never. Thumb doesn't uses. move. So it's back. Correct. Perfect. Just uh, try to get it a bit further down. Yeah, I notice I, I end yeah. up here, and I notice, and you end up like really straight, and it yeah. looks perfect. Well, and you know, it's just a question of practice. There are certain things that that are more of a feel than okay. it's more of a feel. Uh, you're, it's just that the uh, you haven't reached the point where these things are in your DNA yet, so to speak. You know, once they're in your DNA, you, the body almost tells you how to do it right. Yeah. You, know, you bypass right now. You're uh, you're in the conscious mind. Yeah. As it were, really, you're uh, you're at the conscious level. When you reach the subconscious level, it just starts to come by. So why it comes, nobody even knows. It's just there. <laughs> how long did it take you to just just to vanish? Um, I know it probably evolved over the years, but how? Well, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something. When you learn things the wrong way, mm -hmm. you lose a lot of time because then you have to spend a certain amount of time on learning the wrong way and learning the right way. Uh, like Thurston's book, Thurston's card book was a revelation uh, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, the back palm itself. Yeah. Uh, but. Um, uh, but it really didn't teach you the the the, uh, the most sophisticated techniques, so it looks cleaner. The Thurston book, as I as I said before, the Thurston book uh, taught you to hold the card that way and do that, you know, and do that. It, would it, it would it? Well, first of all, obviously, it didn't teach things like that. But it it didn't teach you to produce a card that way. It didn't get into those those fine points. Yeah. Which uh, it's quite possible that they didn't have those fine points at that point. True. Remember, we're talking 1900. Mm -hmm. So these things evolve. Yes. You see, they didn't have the fine points. Um, but that's but that's evolution, you see. So yeah. you guys are lucky. You just have to watch. So actually, <laughs> actually, uh, the, speaking of mentors, uh, in the days before DVDs, uh, a mentor really had to be in front of you, which is still really the ideal. But though a DVD can approach it, yeah. uh, uh, it was my mentors. It was uh, people that I met, like I said, Bobby Baxter and Frank Garcia, etc., etc., etc. These people uh, showed me uh, uh, the finer ways to do it. You know, and, and so you don't. You know, you don't produce it that way. Obviously, you conceal it that way. That's the back pump, but you do it like that. Or better still, you do it like that. Yeah. It must be so nice knowing that the way you do it mm. has to do with all of these experiences in your life and, mm. and this old book that you mm. bought for 75 cents and then you met these friends and they just added. Well, this is a very, very interesting uh, point you're bringing up um, because I, I've got this theory. I don't, I don't know it's 100% original, but I've got this theory that... Uh, in the the value of information uh, uh, has the value of it is predicated on not so much the information per se, but also how the information is received. Yeah. You see, uh, and that's what you you were saying in your own way. In other words, there um, in those days it was it was a lot more difficult to come across this information. Mm -hmm. In other words, there was a, a, a greater degree of rarity to all this magical information, all its secrets. So uh, when one stumbled upon it, stumbled, uh, had stumbled upon it one way or the other, uh, you cherished it more. Yeah. And also you, you felt as though, it also you had a greater sense that you were part of a secret society of a few uh, inner circle men. Yeah. And, it was, and it was like, you know, and, and since it was so precious, it, it, it uh, was incumbent upon you 
uh, to really do it well. Yeah. Because when you did it, you want to make sure that you really mystified the people and amazed them. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, so you were almost part of a secret society. Yep. You know, and it was your job to be, in, since you wanted to be one of those guys, but, but in those days, one of those guys was a very close shop. Yeah. I'm going to be one of those guys and to be uh, uh, among them and also worthy to be among them, to be of their stature and to do this well. And you, you, you know, uh, Unfortunately, if things come too easy, sometimes you don't appreciate them that much. So you don't True. put as much effort into it. True. So uh, you've got to keep that in mind. Uh, so even though, this, even though this stuff is more available now, yep. uh, it's important to keep in mind how precious this stuff is. And how, priv and how privileged you want to have it. And don't take it for granted. And don't take it for granted, right. Because it's... Uh, right. When you, I mean, when you were doing right. it... And remember, no matter, how, no, matter, no, matter, no matter how good you get with it, you actually didn't create it. You may add some things, yeah. but, but you're at, what you actually are, you, you're a person who's been given the gift that's been passed down from many people. Yep. Some were famous, some were totally obscure, but they built this thing. And you're, you, have the pr you were the person who's got the privilege to use this stuff. So then you've got to do it justice, and you've also got to respect it and cherish it. Right, now I'm going to progress to two cards. Look, same technique, except you've added a card. Uh, when you add a card, you add, you add a bit more pressure, so you have to put a bit more pressure uh, with your fingers to hold the card in place. Huh? Right, now you want to... You want to produce that card and leave the second card behind in the back of your hand. You want to be able to do that. Okay. Now, um, when you when you make that first production, you want to make sure that the that the forefinger doesn't go away from the hand, doesn't go away from that second finger, it doesn't go high. Otherwise, that's you're going to get that. It's, it's going to pop out. So you always want to keep this this finger parallel and uh, and also pressed against the top part of the uh, second finger. Right? I'll do it in slow motion. Okay. All right. and once again, you don't want. Let me do it from the from the front view. Uh, you do that and that. Oh, I'm doing it very slow, so you'll see it. Now you don't want to come over the top. That's the old technique. Because look what happens. You, even if you do it fast, you're going to catch what they call the stock. This is the a number of cards in the back palm is called the stock. You don't want to flash the stock. See. So you want to come, I'm going to do it slow so you'll see it. You want to come this way, the way Cardini did. You want to come through there a bit. I'm exaggerating it, I'm doing it slow so you'll see it. You see that? All right. I'll do it a bit faster. Boom. See? Boom. Now for the, for the last card, as I said, I, I, I prefer using the fingertip. It's more elegant to finish with, especially if you're using uh, several cards. I'll do it with three. Now, what's true, what's true for two cards is, is true for a three, four, five, six, and anywhere, any amount of cards up. Of course, the only difference is that the more cards you have, the more strength and the fingers you're going to need to hold them behind. Right? So, like that. This is one. It doesn't change. The only thing that changes is, is the, the amount of strength you need in the fingers to keep them there. It doesn't change. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll do it, and I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it into a hat. Oh, by the way, uh, this brings me to a point: uh, the receptacle that you should use to throw the cards in. It's really pretty optional, um, depending upon uh, your preference or the character you're playing. If you if you've got a formal presentation at top, it's very lovely. You can also use a champagne bucket, in which case they hear the cards dropping in. Uh, that's a nice touch. Um, I prefer the hat if you're a street performer. Uh, you could use other receptacles. When I was uh, a street performer, I, I played a character where, where I dressed all in the black with a turtleneck, no jacket, slacks, and I carried a shoulder bag. And I would throw the cards into my shoulder bag. Um, uh, actually, uh, I didn't use the table at all. I used a woman, a young woman, holding the bag and throwing the cards in. That's how I did it, which allowed me to do comedy with her later on. But let me, let me show you what it should look like. One thing you don't want to do, uh, unless you've, got a, unless you've got, got a control situation where, say, you've got a rug on the floor or a clean surface, you don't want to drop the cards on the floor because the, the cards are going to pick up all kinds of dirt and soot. And when you collect them again, they're not going to fan, they're not going to behave as well. You're going to have to spend time cleaning them off. So don't, if there's any way to avoid it, don't throw the cards on the floor. One or two of them are always going to drop on the floor in any case, but if you get a whole pack on the floor, it's a mess. Now, that may seem fast to you, but I could go a little faster if the cards were made of something other than silicon. Uh, 
Right. I'll do it again. Now, permit me to lick my finger. It's not the most elegant thing, but sometimes it's necessary if, you, if you're working with silicone cards. Because uh, one thing that's going to slow you down, of course, uh, is a slippery card because your finger's going to glide across, and instead of picking it right away, it's going to slide a bit before it picks it up. So you want to avoid that. You could try taking some, um, some, of, the, uh, some of that wax they use for, for counting money in banks. You can put a little bit of that on. Uh, if you're wearing gloves, uh, which I'll explain later, you can, you can wet the, the cotton glove and do it. All right. on, a, on a very humid day, uh, single cards work better because your fingers are perspiring, so that's good. Not good for the fans, but it's good for the singles. So here, it should look like that. Let me just... Here's a variation. I never used it, and, uh, but I learned this years ago, I don't know from who, uh, and uh, I've, I've never seen it uh, in print. I'll show you how that's done. You take a, a number of cards that you're using, you put them on the, the last card, and you, you sandwich them face down on it. And what you're doing is, instead of producing the cards that way, you're bringing them in and kicking them up with a thumb. You bring them a fraction of about halfway in it, kick them up. I'll do it <laughs> so you can see in here. Let me put all the cards towards my... Towards my uh, it's a nice little flourish. The way, if I were going to... Uh, you know, that's, there's a delay on it, but it's quite interesting. They seem to be materializing slowly. Yeah. Um, if I if I were going to use it, I would do maybe one or two cards. I wouldn't do all the cards. Here's what I mean by I would do something like this. Um, maybe uh, every third card, perhaps, just for just as a joke. If I'm going to use it, I'd do something like that, perhaps. Uh, add a bit of novelty. You know, something like that. That you know, whatever. Oh, something I wanted to, uh, something I wanted to add. What you forgot? I, I showed you the, the the correct method for the fingertip production. That one there. Remember this? That method. I'd like to show. Uh, 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 normally, that as I said, that's you would use that. You know, for for the ending of a of a, of a card sequence where you're you're producing single cards. You know, you do that and you do that. But there's a, a, ni a nicer ending even that my friend, a friend of mine, Robin Lane, originated, which is a kind of a double finger tip. You produce the card and then you... It's really quite nice. It's a, instead of a double whammy, you know, and you produce, and then boom. I tend to do it with my left hand. I like to do it with my left hand. In the routine I use, I do that, and then it's boom. It's very pretty. And that, what that is essentially, all you're really doing is, you haven't changed anything, all you're really doing, I'll, I'll show it from behind. All you're doing, all you're doing is, bef before, you, before you do the fingertip production, you're producing one card before, the next to the last card that you produce, you just produce the card and you, and you just do it behind that card. You're doing that same finger. It's the same, it's the same movement, except you don't drop the, the, the next to the last card. And you just do that, yeah, well, do, let me do that again. All you're doing is you, you're retaining hold of the next to the last card and then doing the fingertip production behind it. And that's all. All right, Jeff. Uh, we went over the single cards, yeah. so I want you to teach me the using more than one card or making okay. more cards. All right, all, right, all right, we'll go to two cards. Once you go to two cards, uh, uh, the, the principles are the same for for greater numbers. Okay. So let's go with the two. All right, now this, this you know, okay? okay? Now, the only difference uh, now uh, is that you're going to add a card, okay? So you put one on top, and you want to back palm those cards, okay? All right, now you're going to produce each card, uh, each card separately. So what you're going to need to do now is to, is to bring the, the top card forward 
without letting go of the of the cord uh, that you're gripping huh? underneath it. So yeah. I'm just like, producing this one like I would normally, but right. what's going to happen to that card back there? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, now that, that's what happens when we all begin yeah, for the that's first time. My okay. There, so, all right. So, what you need to do, you have to make sure. You have to you know, look at my hand. You got to make sure that 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 finger doesn't go up any further than it has to go to retain this, the this, the okay. bottom card. Now, watch me. All right, now, remember the first card. The first, since it's only one card, you haven't got a problem. Yep. All right? uh, but the second card, remember, you want to bring this forward. And you want to retain that second card, right? So you have to. So if I did that, the, yeah. right? So you want to do this. You want to make sure that that that, that finger is, is sort of putting a certain amount of pressure towards the top of the second finger, right? Okay. So that keeps that in place as that happens. You got it. Oh, I feel like it's going to pop out there. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. so from, don't from worry about. Don't worry about dropping. No, just worry about accuracy. Okay. All right. So you're there. Okay. Now, you want to bend the fingers in a bit. Now, extend that finger out a little bit. But even though you're extending the finger, resist the tendency to, to bring it up. Keep okay. it keep it down. Keep it down. Keep it pressed down so against your second. The first finger is pressing toward the middle finger. Right. Keep yeah. it down. You, you can swing it out, but keep it down. On you. Okay. you got it, right. And then you Whoa. want it. Okay. Right. Wow. Right, now, well, okay, strange. now, what you want to do is try to... Don't go, don't go too deep. Don't go too down on the face of the cup with the thumb. Use as little as you can, otherwise you're going to be struggling to get that up. You want to just see, see just yeah, get it. Okay. Part of your problem is that you're, you're trying to pull the card in uh, too deep along the finger. Yeah. You want to just pull that card in over the top so you won't get stuck. That's it. Yeah, you got it. Watch. Watch. What? See that? All right. And, and don't don't worry about dropping. Just get it accurate. It doesn't matter if you drop. Yeah, that that's better. Oh, okay. Closer. You got it. All right. Remember, watch me. Watch your dead end. I'll show it to the camera. Dead end. See it? And that. I'll do it again. I'll do it as slow as I can. <laughs> that. Just remember that that finger always stays parallel to the floor, and it's and it's kind of precious towards the. The top of that second finger. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, Good. There you go. There you go. You get that? Yeah. As I said, it takes it takes a while. It takes a while. You know, for you get for the, this whole thing to go in, into the DNA, as it were. I'm feeling so much strain here. Sure. Which you're, they're probably going to feel. Well, you know why you're using muscles you never used before. Yeah. yeah sure. It's crazy. So, and, and, that, and actually, and this is one of the one of the things that discourages students. Mm -hmm. From, from making any real progress is because they they uh, they can't get over the uh, the resistance of the muscles against what they're trying to do. And you know what a lot of people tell me too when it comes to palming and color no. changes. No. They say my hands are too small mm -hmm. or my my hands just don't can't mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. um, well, if your hands if you've got smaller hands, then you got to go to bridge size cards. Yeah. You know. But uh, do you think it's it, it, that just discourages people a lot when they start to feel pains and aches? They go, well, this is just not for me. So is it just a, a matter of keep doing it and you, your muscles will adjust? It's the old story, no pain, no gain. Sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cool. If, if you're feeling a little bit of pain, it, you have to deal with it. If you're feeling too much pain, you put it down, give your hands a rest for a couple of days, two or three days, maybe a week, and then go back to it again. All right. Yeah, uh, what you have to do is you have to, you know, as I said, it's just like like push-ups. You, you start with three push-ups. You don't start with twenty. Yeah. When your body gets a, when your muscles get a constant to three push-ups, then you go to five, six. And the same thing with this. You go to one card, two cards, and then and then your body will tell you when you're ready for the third card. You know, or the fourth yeah. card. However, but if you can do co two cards, if you once you get the two cards, you can usually progress to three. And once you've got the three, then it starts to, the, yeah. the increased number uh, is not that much of a problem. Because because essentially it's a rep repetition of the same movement. Uh, let's try three. Yeah. All right, here's three cards. Now nothing changes. It's just that, that, and that. Yeah. All, right, All right, I'm having. Well, I'm as I said, you, you've got cool. you've got yeah. Well, your 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 fingers uh, lack the strength necessary. But forget. Uh, don't worry about dropping cards. You're going to drop cards. So, okay. yeah. so the same same thing here. This. You, very good. Oh, I got one. All right, oh, oh, here, take it out and try the other. Thank you. Okay. Wow. There you go. It's possible.
I think it might be easier with three for me because of the, <laughs> the pressure or something. Was, yeah, you've got more aggression. <laughs> yeah, that's possible. Yeah, right, so it's one, two, three. You know, once you've got three, you've, you, it's the beginning of infinity. Yeah. One is singular, two is duality, and three can be three million. <laughs> you know, so when you, if you can get to three, you're probably going to get to more. Okay. So. All right. Uh -oh. Another thing, let, let me point something out. Uh, let me point something out that you want to avoid. Once, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I know the I'm feeling. I know the feeling. I know it's the like feeling. You get like strange. I know the feeling. If you guys aren't feeling it, I know the feeling. Y years ago, years ago, I tried to play the guitar, and I, I actually, I, I, I couldn't stand uh, uh, the uh, the pressure on my fingers holding the frets down. You know, uh, the strings against mm -hmm. the frets, uh, and I gave it up. You know why? Because I didn't love it enough to go through the pain that was necessary. Yeah. And that's an, like I'll go back to the love thing again. If you love the stuff enough, you'll endure the pain that's necessary. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't have to do, all, do it all at once. Yeah. Just do it a piece at a time. That's pretty good. Now wait a minute. Let me let me help you here. Uh, I'm getting a real deep grip. Yeah. Okay. Give yourself. A, Is that okay? Yeah. That, Should yep. they try that? Like, well, you're the only one, you're the only one that knows how it feels. But you no. What you want to do? No. You don't want to. Uh, what I mean by a deep grip, you don't necessarily have to have oh, the tips of the cuts coming deep in. I just meant deep in terms of the the, the position on the finger. You want it okay. deeper in here. Now, those for one card, like I said, for one card, look, for one card, that's okay to be there. Okay. Okay. But I prefer, since I'm used to it, to come down. For two, with two or more cards, the cards are not gripped here anymore. They're gripped further down on the finger. So, and watch my, so watch my, look, no, well, look, 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 look where it is with me. It's actually a touch, just a fraction below the second joint. Okay. Because if you don't do that, you're not going to, you're not going to be in a position, look, if I try, look, if I keep all the cards here, well, I'm a bit experienced, I can do, if you do that, it, they'll have a tendency to drop more. That's right, because you don't have a grip on all That's of right. them. That's right. That's right. So, watch me, when, when you start going to two, especially, well, two cards, you may get away with that, but when you're going through three cards and beyond, you want to, you want to have it further down. Now watch, shit, look, so now what's happening, so now it's, and remember, another thing I should uh, tell you, another thing I've got to make clear. Resist the tendency, like a lot of people do. A lot of people use this finger to walk the car, to push it I forward. Think that's what I'm doing. Yeah, don't walk the car. Don't push it forward. This, all this finger does is get out of the way. This finger has two purposes. One, to keep the cards in the back palm position by keeping the pressure on. But all it wants to do is get out of the way so you can grab it. People have a tendency, uh, and it has to do with the fact that they, that they, that they don't have enough uh, of a grip on the card. It's, they tend to do that, and then they want this, this finger to push the okay. card forward. You resist that. Because if you if you don't do that, then you slow the movement down. Plus, you plus you're risking uh, you're risking the, the uh, you take the risk that these cards are going to pop out because this finger's going to go up. So watch, don't push the card forward. Watch this. Just no. uh, it's hard actually. It's really hard. It's harder to do it in slow motion than fast yeah. without having a problem. But I'll do it. Look. Uh. You see, you want all that finger does is get out of the way. It doesn't do anything else. So, so I don't look. Well, I'll do it slow. Watch. I don't do this. I'm not gonna. I'm not. Doing that, yeah. I'm just getting the finger out of the way. And what I'm noticing here, stop, pause right there. Mm -hmm. right, go ahead and do that again, but then stop after you produce. Stop right there. Mm -hmm. Your grip, his grip. It's very deep. On these, on the cards that are in the stock, is mm -hmm. that what they call it? Mm -hmm. It's like the pressure is here. So even if this, when this finger comes out, can't, it, it can't, can't go anywhere. It can't go anywhere because of that, that knuckle, that right around. There. Well, I'll show you something which uh, I'm not sure if it's in, uh, if it's uh, if it's Insidiocratic to me, but look look what happens to my pinky when I do it. I don't know if other other people make this experience, but I notice when I when I'm producing because my pinky, not only is it pressing, but it's also curling around. Oh. You see, the tip of my pinky curls around, so I get myself more support. You might even get like an extra uh, snap. Because a lot of, of I, a lot of people. As I, I actually I really haven't consulted other people, but I, as I said, I don't know if it's it's just something that I'm doing. Look, yeah, you curl your uh, my. Uh, at certain points, when I'm making the production, uh, the pinky doesn't stay parallel. It, it has a tendency to curl. Can the camera see that? It has a tendency to curl. And between the pressure here and here, it kind of locks it in. That actually kind of helps me. I, I, if, you can, if, if, if you feel comfortable, I would do it. If, if you don't feel comfortable, don't do it. But you, I noticed that that pinky, look, look, watch the camera. Watch the bottom of that pinky. So I kind of, I'm actually locking the other ones into a degree. It has that extra yeah. grip. It actually it, it helps. Might, it might help you. It actually helps. Yeah. Because it, you're not, yeah. Um, but I would, right now, 
yeah, I would concentrate on what yeah. on this, this thing, thing and make sure that it doesn't pop. And as I said, you don't need to uh, when you're producing cards, you don't want to you don't want to go too far down on the card with the mm -hmm. thumb because then it takes it takes a longer amount of time for it to get it over. You just want to go on that. You, 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 well, if you've got a few cards, you can get away with that, but if you've got more cards, you have to come a little bit deeper. But you don't want to come, because uh, the more distance the card's got, to, the thumb's got to travel with the card, the longer it's going to take you. So just do, you just want to do this, look, it's just buff, buff. Now I'll show you what it's like when you're doing like 20 or 30 cards. Jeff, before you move on, let me ask you a question. Ask me. All right, Jeff, uh, one thing that I uh, have a problem with, with mm -hmm. when I'm doing this is sometimes I'll come this way and, and two cards will pop will up. pop out. Mm -hmm. like, maybe it's a cooler move to do two cards, but I don't, that's not what I want. Mm -hmm. It's just like two cards will pop out in front and I'll get, mm -hmm. I'll get this thing going on where I've got mm -hmm. two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, once again, we're going back to, to this essential uh, issue, which is that uh, you want to keep enough pressure, you want to keep enough pressure on that finger, yeah, you know, so that way only one card is permitted to come loose. The only thing that's dislodging that card is the thumb. Now, if you don't have enough pressure, if you don't have enough pressure, two will like likely to pop up. You see. Now, sometimes the cards, whether it's because of the nature of the, of, uh, the coating or maybe it's, it's humid, sometimes cards do have a tendency maybe to stick together a little bit. So uh, that's another reason why if you don't have enough pressure, two, two of them are going to stick together and come up. It, ha it can happen. So once again, it's a it's a question of a it's a question of what you're doing with that top finger. You have to have enough pressure to retain. You'll notice, by the way, you know the cards. If you look very very closely, and if you if you uh, uh, feel closely enough, you'll notice that you can almost feel the edges of all the cards. Like I can, I actually can tell you how many cards I have behind my hand without even without even looking. I can tell it's three. Mm -hmm. I know it's not two. I know it's two. So you know at the end of your because stock, you know why? Because actually, look, look how the cards when the cards are, when the cards are curved, uh, they bevel a bit. Oh, look, look, because there are actually three cards there. Oh, you can feel it. Yeah. You can actually feel the three cards. You know, feel the one and feel the two. Now, so in a certain sense, you're not really only if the cards were that way. You're not really holding. You're actually holding them, and they're slightly uh, graduated, shall we say, yep. in levels. So now, if you're not uh, so there is room, there is room for one card to pass, pass over the others. You know, if it's not passing over the others and taking two of them, that means you don't have, a, you're not holding enough pressure, and two of them are escaping. You know so, uh, in fact, I, I, I've been doing it so many years, like I never have that happen. It only happens if the cards are sticking. <coughs> you know? Though it, uh, I've seen it happen to the best of professionals, but that, that's usually because they're either it's a humid day and the cards are sticking and they're not paying attention, or they're not putting enough pressure at that moment. It, uh, occasionally, it will happen to everybody, but if, if you know what you're doing, it's not going to happen. You just have to be sensitive to the fact that that finger, uh, as I said, a certain amount of this uh, it, it comes from inside. You know, you can't. You got to reach a point where you don't think about it. Yeah. All right. Right now, you're at you're at the thought level. You know, uh, you got to reach that, that. I don't know what the what the term is, but there's a term for it. Subconscious level. Yeah. Okay. That's not the term, but that but that but that explains it. Fine. So that is just going to. You see, it's a feel. It's not a think. It's a feel. It's almost a non-feel. You just know it. It's like Bruce Lee. Like you know, Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee knew how to do certain things. He wasn't even thinking anymore. The body just reaction. Yeah. Um, but if, if to answer your question, the cards full. Cards full because you're not using enough pressure. Now the reason why uh, beginners use too much pressure is because the, since they're inexperienced, they're afraid that all the cards are going to drop. Yeah. Right. But when you reach the point, uh, when you reach the point of confidence where you know they're not going to drop, yeah. But that does. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Don't worry about the cards dropping. Okay. Just worry about the accuracy of what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, as I said, your body, uh, your body just has an accepted, uh, you know, the, uh, the instinct. Yeah. I've been doing this for the whole week. Yeah. As, once you've got, but the rules that apply to two and three cards, particularly three cards, they apply to all, all the other cards that you might use. Okay. No matter how much, uh, how much you can increase the number. Once you can do the three, that's all you need to be taught with this, because then four, five, six, seven is the same thing. The only difference is that you have to use more pressure to hold them. Not really that much more. Uh, one, of, one of the things you need with this is 
confidence. The confidence that you're not going to drop the cards. Because right? if you think about dropping the cards, you're going to drop the cards. Yeah. You're not relaxed. Uh, now, one of the ways the cards are going to drop is if the cards are too slippery. And, as, and with the new silicon cards, they are slippery and they will drop. So, um, you just back palm like half the deck. No, no. <laughs> um, no, so I'm gonna. Like I'm gonna. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna attempt. This card is. Uh, uh, these cards are extremely stiff and slippery. You, you know that. Mm -hmm. Feel my card. They're like your cards. Yeah. It's very brittle. So I'm gonna use a, a, a pack that's uh, slightly less uh, silicon coated and slightly, okay. uh, slightly more soft. And I'm a bit sit, more soft. I'm gonna sit down and watch because I want to see. No, no. I want you to stand here a minute. All right. Now these cards have a whiteboard, and I, I wouldn't, if, unless I'm using gloves, I wouldn't use these gloves in a performance, but for, for purposes of explanation, okay, I'm going to show you what's possible, uh, okay? Because these cards are a bit less slippery. All right, one, two, how many cards do you want? Don't say a hundred. How many? Fifteen. Okay, all right. Fifteen? Yeah, it's uh, four, five, six. Okay, fifteen cards. Yeah. It, it, the, you notice that nothing changes. Okay. Beyond two and three cards, nothing changes. It's just you're just adding more cards. Okay. Now, by the way, you'll notice, of course, the more cards you have, the more the, the stock's going to be exposed because the strongest person in the world can't 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 possibly squeeze his fingers enough to conceal all the cards. So what you're going to have to do uh, uh, when you when the stock uh, when the stock is full, in other words, when you have the maximum amount of cards. Mm -hmm. You, you start with the thumb in that position. Yeah. You don't start that way. If you're having two or three cards, even with white border cards, you can hardly see them. All right. Uh, I'll, let me show you with the uh, with the overall design cards. So uh, uh, these cards are unusually stiff, so I really wouldn't use these in performance. But if I begin if I begin with the with the thumb in that position, I keep my hand moving at a, at a decent distance. You're not going to see them. So you're going to see, if I do that, you start to see them. And it's odd, if you, if you do that, you can start that way, right? Yeah. All right. We'll use the, uh, we'll use the white-boarded cards so you get it. So you have, to, you have to get that big stock coming through, but you just have the thumb on top, kind of covering it. Yeah. You start, uh, that's especially true when you start with uh, fan productions, which we'll get into later, which are having more cards even. But you want to start there, you see. So... Normally, I would start. You start, and as the cards and as the cards decrease in number, you know it's softer, so you can, then you can start squeezing your fing, uh, your fingers together, and keeping the thumb out. As the cards decrease in number, as the volume becomes less behind your hand, then you can then you can start doing that. But you but you want to start. You start with your thumb up. You know, uh, these cards are a little bit softer, so I don't have to worry about that. But uh, what the border should show you what's going on. You start with the thumb there. You can start that way. And then as the cards decrease the number, you can squeeze them better and keep your thumb out. You know? But you'll see, it doesn't show. Now, I'll show you from the back position. You guys can check out how this looks from the back. Yeah. The dirty now, one. remember, I'm not doing this. I'm doing that. So nothing changes. Nothing changes. Just because the stock is wider. Now I can, I can feel where I can start to... I can feel where I can start to squeeze my hands more. Nothing changes. So cool. Then I can do that. Here's a very pretty, pretty and uh, rather novel production um, uh, in which you appear to uh, uh, produce cards out of the air, not with uh, the palm completely facing the audience, but with the hand uh, apparently grabbing sideways. Here's how it works. <laughs> you take, well, at least three or more cards, line them up, and you want to you kind of finger palm those cards along the edge of the, the, the second or uh, middle finger, like that, you see that? You do that. All right, and you want to 
bring that thumb under the the, the top the inner uh, the top uh, outer edge and do inner edge and do that. Boom. Uh, look how it looks from. Also, you'll notice that uh, my pinky is up. The pinky is up. If you keep the pinky down, there appears to be too much too much concealed space. So it's not as much of an illusion. But if you keep that pinky up between the pinky and that space between the thumb and the first finger, it, it, it adds a kind of airiness. So it, the hand tends to look a little bit more empty. You see, just that just that little thing helps a lot. I'll do it sideways. Now, you want to get the cards, it's not always possible, the cards have a tendency to come out a little sideways that way, but you want to get them as parallel, as vertically parallel to the floor as possible. Now, with the new silicon cards, it's, it's often difficult to do that, but you can try. And the way you do that, the way I tend to do that, is that uh, when you push the card between these fingers, obviously, as you can see what's hap as you see it, as you see it, the forefinger pivots a little bit against the side of the second finger. So, and if you do that and let, let the thumb come away from the card a bit, it, the card will straighten out, you see? Watch it. So I'll try it this way. So I'll do it in slow motion. One. And of course you want to keep, remember to keep that hand on an angle. Two, three, I'll do it a bit faster. A little faster. Now I'll show you a, a combination that I use occasionally when I'm in the right situation. If I'm at a far, far enough distance from the audience, I'll, I'll do a combination of the of, of the the back palm of the single back palm production and the uh, side grab. I can do. Uh, I'll come in an arc and do that. Do that. But usually I will start the other way. It's much easier. You'll see why. Usually I'll start with producing the cards from behind the hand. I'll do that, that, that. Then I'll arc it up and then go right into that, you see. And then come back down again and do that. All right, let me go over, go over it one more time so you'll see exactly what's going on. Look. All right, the cards are really held. The cards are held along All right. that edge there, second finger. All right. Pinky's up, the thumb comes under, pushes the card forward. It's clipped between the first and second finger. The, this finger moves up against the, the second finger slightly and brings it out, and the thumb slides down to the bottom. And that's it. I'll show, I'll show this closely here. Uh, Jay, you want, uh, uh, you can start with three cards, that's sufficient. Just three? Okay. Yeah. All right, now you want those cards, you want to palm those cards, kind of finger palm them along the edge of the, along the uh, edge of the second finger there, on the second, third finger, hold the cards in place. All right. It's, uh, the card is, uh, the top of the card is just a touch above the, your first joint of the middle finger. Of the two middle fingers, see it? There you go. Remember, the pinky's up. And slightly tilted to the audience, and that thumb, which should be moist or sticky, that thumb is going to push the bottom card towards the first finger. And see how that? And the first finger is going to clip it and push up against the side of the second finger. All right, bringing that card up. See, it? let's try it. So it's and look what I do with my thumb. I move it out of the way, but I move the, I move the thumb down to the, to the bottom of the card as that's happening. So that you kind of extend that first finger too, right? Right, and I extend the first, I extend the first finger slightly upward, and I extend the, the thumb down to the card. And that helps, that helps to actually keep the card a bit parallel when it's produced. See how that card uh, stays a little more parallel yeah, when it's produced? Yeah, the thumb kind of gets out of the way. Kind of thumb gets out of the way, right, exactly. Right, 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 exactly. Precisely, that's good. So it's... You got it. Yeah. You can work on getting them just a little more, just a little more, a little more ver vertical. Yeah, that's good. Don't worry about it. That's good. It's like another trick. That's good. Like a short distance spinner. That's good. There you go.
There you go. Is there any particular way to get into this, or what, is it something you would you'd start in classic common and ship it Well, down? you could. Uh, well, well, uh, you could you could just steal you could just steal it off the top of the pack, riffle a few cards, and steal it off. Uh -huh. And then just shift it down into that. Yeah, I said the way I, as I said the way I like to do it. I'll show you with one card. The, you, you saw me going from the back palm to that production. Yep. Well, the way I do it is normally you see the way you do the back and front palm. Yep. You remember that when I when I shift it around to that side of the hand. Instead of just doing this and coming back, what I do is I get the that bottom edge of the card there in the in my thumb crotch yeah. and I I, I Clip it. grab it and I oh, I see I pinch it down. So so from so. that position you just all right wa watch me again watch it carefully watch I come up and I get the thumb under and I lodge it in the crotch and these things all press it push it forward so it goes down. That's how you can do that. You can do it with, and you do, of course, you do it with several. Oh, that's it. There you got you. Wow. You got it. Voila. So with multiple cards, same thing. Yeah, same here. thing. Or you would start here. Just tweak it. And come up. You got it. That's it. it. That. Perfect. You can do one or two, and then you can, and then if you want, you can even come back on it. You know, you, oh, can, you can go back. You can, well, what oh, you, in tough. this case, what you're doing is, you're using the, these fingers to buckle it outwards again. So I buckle outwards, get the pinky there, and come back, and you can produce it. That's it. Oh, Perfect. Jeez. That's cool. So you can just use all these moves together right. in your own combination. Well, you know, in a way, uh, the more moves that you know, the better it is, because then you can create compositions like a piece of music. Oh. Yeah. That's a cool one. That was the Cardini card production. Now I'll explain it. This is probably um, uh, the most complex of the uh, single card productions from inside the hand. Uh, the cards have to be curved lengthwise, held in the palm thusly. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be using several fingers to bring the cards forward. The first thing you need to do is to have a rather moist third finger. Uh, uh, you can either do it uh, with saliva, or you can put a little uh, 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 counters or wax or whatever. But the main thing is that has to be fairly moist. Uh, uh, if you gift it with moist fingers, you're lucky. You have to use that finger to pull that card slightly away from the rest of the stock. Now, now you want to get this middle finger under that card, so you're pushing that down slightly over that finger. The first thing that comes over and locks it in, but you don't swing it forward. What you do is the thumb just kicks the card the rest of the way forward. Mm -hmm. Watch, I'll do it from here. It's actually kind of four actions. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, um, a few of the performers who have attempted it have a tendency to uh, to try to swing the card out. It doesn't look as magical. What they try to do is they kind of get it and then kind of swing it up like that. Uh, or they have a tendency just to push the card out too far before they do that. You want the card to appear to pop into view from the fingers. So that's why you you pause at that point. It's one, two, and then you pause and then you kick it forwards. So it, you see what it looks like? See it? Boom, it just pops forward like that. Now, the only problem with this production is how in the world do you get into it? How do you palm the card? Well, well, of course, you've got the option to walk out and use it as your first production. You can just walk out. Uh, I wouldn't advise smoking cigarettes, but if you smoke cigarettes, you can have a cigarette, smoke it, and puff, put a puff of smoke, and then reach in there and get them. Uh, when I was, uh, there was a time I, I, I did a routine in which I, I produced them in my left hand as well as my right, so uh, I... I um, had a technique for for copying these into my left hand uh, by still by stealing them off the pack. Uh, let me show you what I mean. During uh, during the course of my routine, I would end with the pack of cards in that position, almost like a, in a kind of a gesture of of a, of, of, a, of a kind of a thank you position, receiving the applause. And what I would do is, as I turned, I would just riffle these cards right off. 
into my left hand. I just kind of hold the cards in that position, and then as I turned, as I turned, I would just riffle and, and just tuck these cards in here. Let me do that again. And then you're, you're right into it, and I would put it to my left hand. Uh, if, of course, if you're if you're a lefty to begin with, I guess you could you could do that with the right hand as well. Uh, what I another technique I had uh, was to go from the from the uh, the backhand. We haven't gone into the productions of fans from the backhand, but when we get to that point, I would split them off. As my left hand would come down, I would go right from the from the, from the reverse palm right into the into that. So actually, instead of doing this. I would do this and then push further and come right into the Cardini position. You see it? So I would do this. Look, of course, my hand would be down at my side. When my left hand was doing another production, I would just push him up. You could even use a, a bit of the body to help you push him up and position him. But you don't really need to because you can do it this way. Huh? And then push a little bit further. So remember now, remember the basic back and front palm. Instead of just doing this, what you're doing now is this. You're pushing just a little bit further, and you go right into that position. It can be done. There you are. And then you're ready for your produ production. Once again. There it is. You can do it. Mm -hmm. See, I'd go from this classic technique, the back and front to right into the Cardini by pushing that a little bit further and they'd lodge there and then I could go into it. I used to do this. Uh, well, you see, the, the reason why you would do uh, productions with, with the back of the hand facing the audience is because you, you want to introduce variations into a routine. Uh, it, it's very nice to do uh, productions like this but uh, the more uh, vari variations you have in a routine, the, the greater the variety and the greater the scope for presentation. So sometimes you want to be facing the audience and produce cards in this way. So uh, this is one of the many ways in which you can do it. Uh, it, it is more difficult than most, uh, than most slides, but if, if you uh, find the right approach, you can put it in just at the right moment, for instance. Um, I, uh, I have a production uh, of my own, which I actually created when I was about 16 years old, which I actually prefer. It's, it's not easy, but it's a, it's a bit simpler than this one. In fact, it's more effective because the hand looks more open. Uh, the problem with the Cardini production, although it's effective, is that the hand does look a bit cramped. Uh, the hand does look a bit cramped. Nobody holds the hands that way. I, I overcome that fact, uh, that, that, uh, that problem, because years ago, I wound, up, uh, I wound up in this position with my hands crisscrossed. So it was like a dramatic gesture. Years ago, I could do it with my left hand. I don't know if I can do it tonight, but we'll try. I used to wind up in this position. So uh, if you're being dramatic, you know, uh, you can kind of justify that position. Then you can kind of do something like that, you know, this type of thing. I used to do that years ago. But I, I much prefer uh, my own production, which is what I use exclusively now when I'm turning to the side. This is the, the Sheridan production. It's a kind of, a, it's a kind of a, a longitudinal, longitudinal type uh, group, grip. You only... Uh, the cards longitudinally along the edge of the thumb, like that. You see, and look how the hand looks. The hand actually looks a lot more natural. Uh, remember, the Cardini is like that. With my, uh, with mine, you're like that. All right, and all I have to do is reach out and grab. I get a card. See, it's much. It's a lot more natural. And here, here's the technique on that. The first thing that comes under the bottom card, and when you. If you put a little pressure on your thumb, the cards tend to bevel a little bit, which means that you've got a, a slight progression. So you can do that. And the second thing, it comes over the top, and you grab it and push forward. See that? It's quite, quite elegant. Um, I, uh, I have different ways of getting into that. Uh, you, can, you can walk on smoking a cigarette and blow again and put the cigarette back in your mouth and reach into the smoke and get the card. Uh, what, what makes this quite, quite nice is that there's another, uh, another um, production uh, that you can use in combination. I have a friend, uh, years ago, I, I had a friend who I showed this to. He tried to do it, and this happened. So we discovered that, that there was a spin here. Because so, to be honest, my, orig my original technique was not this, it was this. 
that which is a lot slower. Uh, so when he tried to do that, it just slipped out. So uh, my friend's name was Robin Lane, a very great manipulator. Uh, so now we call it the Sheridan Lane. So you, it enables you to do this, which is very, very, uh, which is very unique in magic. In fact, it's it's an innovative, it's an innovative production. You produce, and then you can spin. Produce, you can spin. It's quite beautiful. And when you use it, uh, the way I use it, I use it in combination with my left hand for a kind of a double production. I reach a point in my routine. I reach a point in my routine. Uh, well, I wind up with, because uh, because uh, of course I can produce cards in my left hand as well. That's an interesting point. Uh, whenever possible, you should try to develop your left hand for some other things because if you've got both hands in play, you've got a, a lot more possibilities for routining. So this is the way I use it. I'm producing cards here in my left hand, and I start producing cards in my right, and then they start to spin and pop up. You see, it's quite beautiful. Now here's a variation I worked out uh, that's uh, predicated on the Cardini. Um, the Cardini production is, of course, all the cards in one direction, uh, the cards facing away from your palm. That would be the audience, and of course you're doing this, like I uh, like I showed before. My variation is to put every other card um, face down. You see, you get one more card for that, so you start face up. So here's your setup. Which allows me to produce one up and one down. One up and one down. One up, one down, and one up. I'll sh show you how that looks to the audience. It should look something like that. I, I, I know, in actuality, I haven't performed this for quite a, a number of years, but I'll uh, do my best. So that allows you to do. That, 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 and that. Cute, huh? Okay, Jeff, I want to learn that Cardini sure. card production. Uh, uh, you know, let's start with one card. Okay, just one card. Yeah. So you get the technique right. Is it like a tenkai palm almost? Yeah, it's a kind of a tenkai palm, uh, uh, except you got a curve in it. A curve and, outward, right? Uh, yeah, well, it bevels out. And you want to you want to place that card sort of along here and grip it under the thumb about like that. Okay. You got to go a little deeper on the thumb. Deeper this. Meaning further in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Further. Right, yeah. Now, uh, now, as with every, as with everything else, um, with card manipulation, you uh, uh, you have to ascertain for yourself what feels the most comfortable, all right? Because no two hands are alike. But uh, does that feel comfortable for you? Yeah, Is it comfortable? I think it's all comfortable. Right. going to be for the first right. time. I think you might eventually. You might want to go give a little more curve to that, but it seems all right now. Okay. So here's what's going on. You want to put. Uh, well, actually, since since it's only one card, you actually don't. Have to bring it down, but you want to you want to grab that card with that pinky, pull it down, pull it down slightly over the uh, the top of the, the second finger, right? And now the third finger, the first finger, which is the third finger in this case, comes to meet it, locks it in, come forward slightly, and now the thumb pushes forward. Perfect. All right, now let's do it with two cards. Now you'll, now you see now you'll see why you need to use that that uh, third finger first. I think there's going to be a problem here when I start doing more. All right. That, that's about uh, you have moist fingers, you need to moisten that finger. If you don't moisten it, it's not going to work. Okay. That's what you want to do is, that's a good idea. It's more elegant than just going like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot more elegant. Than, okay, here. Nah. Unless you have a lap dog around. There. <laughs> All right, now watch. Now, another, another thing, you want to make sure that you keep the pressure there because if you, if you relax the second card, the card underneath is going to pop away. Okay. So you want to just, you want to just, you actually don't, you just want it to leave. Um, you want the card to leave the top part, uh, the top part of the, of the edge. In other words, it's gonna. Is, there's like a little piece of skin here on the thumb. It's gonna pop. Yeah. In, in other words, you you don't want to take it away from uh, the bottom part of your hand, but you just want to have it to do. Want it to do that okay. and get and then come forward and push it over that finger. 
and the middle finger. Right, and then have the first finger, and it have the first down. finger come over to meet it. That, yeah, now don't, now come forward with those three fingers first. Okay. Now stop, now push it forward with the thumb. Yeah, let's, uh, let's do it again. Ah. Let's do it, as, here you go, watch. Yeah. I'll do it from so the camera can see it. Yeah. Got it? Yeah. Let's try it. It's cool when you did it, it sounded like an airplane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, from here on in, it's all plain sailing, you know. <laughs> So third finger. Uh, you know, you want to give a bit more of a curve okay. to that. Okay. Yeah. Can you right, watch. You know what? I really let me see your hand. I think you want to just a bit more up oh, like that. Deep in there. A little deeper, otherwise they're going to pop out on you. you yeah. A little, a little deeper on that curve. Yeah. Okay. Now watch me. Now follow me. Get to that. Get to that point. No, no. Don't put your. No, no. Oh. Now you want to. This has to pull it over the finger. If you start digging, you're going to knock the other card out. Don't okay. dig with the second finger. Watch. Is it over the f yeah, you want that finger to be further. That's it. Okay. All, right. All right. Now lock it in. Now come forward with those fingers. Slightly. Now kick it forward. That's it. You got it. Try three. Okay. Try three cards. In this case, the more, the more cards, the merrier, because you've got more, t more pressure. You've got more tension, which is good. Yeah, I know that hurts for after a while. Yeah, it know. feels weird. It feels weird. It hurts the... Uh, you get pain here, yeah. You got three? Yep. Alright, so make sure the finger nice and moist. We really should uh, get some uh, some finger counting wax so we yeah. seem we appear, we appear less obnoxious to the people. It's kind of nice to just like have anyway. it down here and just <laughs> right. Dab it. Right. So it's one, two, three. One. Okay. okay, now resist the, tempta the temptation yeah. to go digging with the second finger. Seven. You know what, you might, you might, if you, may, perhaps it's better if you go, if you come slightly back on that. Come deep here, but go, maybe, maybe you need more clearance room to get your finger on there. You, let's see, you've got very long fingers. Yeah, so you might want to, yeah, let, you might, maybe a little deeper and come a little bit further south, so okay. that way this finger doesn't have to go under it. Okay. I don't know, I could be wrong, but you can adjust it later. So now watch, is, okay. this finger first. It, what you're doing, and as you now, as you're doing this, here's how I my fingers. Watch my fingers. How it happens. I go and then get my finger under it. Oh yeah, yeah. Go that and then really, get your that really right. improved my grip. You see that? Yeah. So you want to get and then come up. You 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 don't want to you don't want to start digging when this card is still too close to the other card. You see, when that top card is too, too close to the card, you want to come. You can go digging digging slightly, but I don't even do that. I kind of pull it. Watch I, watch, I kind of pull it, watch, I pull it down over that finger, and then immediately, immediately, as soon as it's approaching here, immediately this finger comes in, locks it in. Now, you, now to resist the temptation to open the fingers all the way, okay. just go a fraction and then kick it forward with the thumb. Okay. One last try here. Okay. Mm-hmm. Here. Yep, mm -hmm. I'm digging. You're losing your, well, you're losing your grip, that's why. Okay. Okay. Pull it over. Good. Oh, my, that, that's okay. That that's okay. Don't worry about it. But, you, but the technique was good on that. So it's. Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. I've practiced that one. Well, you, you're, as I said, you've got to get used to, to holding that, yeah. that tension there. But you got it. You got the technique. Were those all Joe? All right, now remember, you know what? I don't think you're deep enough here. I don't think I don't think that card is curled enough or deep enough in that hand. That that you want to be something like that. Wow. Okay. I yeah. guess because I have a smaller. Yeah, you, you can. You, 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 well, that's the thing. Everybody's hands has a slightly different di different series of dimensions. Okay. So, so you want to finger. pull that down onto that finger. You can come down a little, but that's it. Now lock it in instantly. Now relax. I mean, don't lose the pressure. Oh, wow. Don't forget that. Just come forward slightly. Now kick it forward. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, actually there are two things you. There are two. Uh, actually, it's like the back palm. There are two issues here. One is having the strength to hold that, uh -huh. and then the second is the uh, the actual uh, manual it's technique. Like getting used to holding right. these cards. Right. Right. Okay. Remember. Remember. Remember you. Remember you. You're not bringing the second finger to the card. You're bringing the card. You're bringing the card to the second finger, and then locking it in with that finger, and then coming forward. Wow. It's much harder. In the other one. Yeah, just. <laughs> Good. All right, now, right, now that, 
come up slowly. What you want to do is stop and then push it forward with that, with that boom, so it seems to appear. All right, are you, are you lost, but don't worry. Unless I grip, okay, from here. And then... And just kick it. No, you, uh, you want to... You're just kicking it. You're just putting pressure over the first finger and just going, puff. And these fingers are just getting out of the way. They're not helping you at all. Oh, on the kick out. Yeah, on helping. the kick. Watch, when you're there, these fingers no longer help. The finger kind of locks it against the first finger, and these fingers get out of the way. And that's wow. it. That's how it pops up. I think I'm getting that... Mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. I think I should just stop for a while. <laughs> now my hands just. Kind is, of... is this is that moist enough? That finger to do? I, I think you're losing it. You know. Yeah. I, I just. That's better. I think what's happening is. Yeah. I'm feeling strain in my hand. So yeah. Sure. The palm's not gripping it anymore. So that okay. okay. Well. So. Yeah. Well, you know, actually, it's a good plan. It's a good plan to uh, just to do this. Mm -hmm. So here and there, so you can get the. So you can get the, the muscles accustomed to it, then you can do the technique. Okay. But I gave you the technique. You, uh, yeah. I gave it to you. So, so you said it's, what, it's like five steps or four steps? So it's essentially three steps. It's one, two, three, four. But those first three steps have to become one step, essentially. See? So it becomes... See it? That's it. If we had the pack of cards that they had made 30 years ago, uh, he wouldn't be having this much trouble because this is insanely simple, slippery. Believe me. So it's not me. It's not him. It's not just him. It's only partly him. <laughs> it's only partly him. No, really. <laughs> These things are, you know, this is... Yeah. So what's the problem with modern cards there? The problem with modern cards, you can feel, the problem with the modern cards, they're too slippery. Okay. They're too brittle. There's no friction. Mm -hmm. It leaves your hand, no, it may be okay for... My hand, my, it's a, it, hand it's okay, for, it's okay if you're going to put them in shuffling machines. Mm -hmm. But it's not f for, you know, and you're a young guy and you're, you haven't lost all well, the oils out of your hands yet. You've still got plenty of oil in your hand uh, and you're still having trouble. Yeah. You know, the, this is, um, yeah, all right, so let's watch. Once you're there, pause and then kick forward. Okay. Okay, here's my, my variation is a, you, you, uh, you reverse uh, several of the cards, I mean, you would disperse them. One face down, one up, face down, okay, you got that. Same bend? Yes, yeah, the same bend. So you've reversed a, f a couple of cards. Let's just start with a few. So, only difference is now that the one card's face out, so there, that would be the audience, Jay. So I'm there. And now what I do is, now, with the card face, instead of coming up with the thumb, I just press the thumb down. In other words, let me do it with one card. Look, Jay, instead of coming up with the thumb, as I'm there, I just push the thumb down. I push the card down. See okay, it? so you, you grab just try it the one same card. Way. Yeah. Now, in other words, I'm grabbing the same way, but instead of going pushing up, I'm just pushing the thumb down on the card. Right, that's it. Down towards them. Oh. All right, let's try it again. Think. Okay. All right, yeah, just just use one card. Okay. Just one card face out, so so it's clear. All right. All right. Now that would be face up towards them. Right. Now you're going to do the same thing again. The same action, except with one difference. You stop at that point and push. You don't, instead of coming under the card, you come on top of the card, actually, and push it down. And it's held between the middle finger? Yeah, just push it down. That's it. And there's your audience, okay? Now I'll, go, I'll do it with you. Let's do it together. Okay. Right, let me, let's turn first, first we do it. Okay. All right, let's say that's the audience. First, all right, first, we're going to do it the classic way, which is that. And then the thumb pushes forward. Okay, now let's let's reverse the card, so the face is facing our palm. And now you're going to do this. You're going to get to this point, right? But you're not you're not, not going to go over the card. You're going to go under the card. No, uh, you're going to, not going to go under the card. You're going to over the card and push it down. That's it. Let's try it again. All right. Well, we get it to that position, but you go over the card and push it down. I grabbed it wrong. Now. Okay. Mm -hmm. And push it down. Perfect. All right, now look, well, let's see what happens if we, uh, if we do this. Uh, let's see what happens. Now look what happens. So now, look, I'll just do it. use five cards to illustrate. Okay? So look, look what we can do now. If you do that, there's your audience. You're going you're gonna to get buff, under, over, which brings it down. Okay, that's, let me, let me see. Okay, this one, I go down. Down, right, all right. And the other one up. Wait, I lost my grip. Okay. This one is 
Yikes. Right. It's the classic one. You're yeah. going under and over. That's the one I'm all right. up. All right, and then this one, all right, do that again. This one's going to go, I'm losing my groove too. Down. And this one's going to go down, and that one's going to go up. That's it. Oh, no, uh, up. Up, right. I push down. That's it. Okay. Cool. Cool.